Praise the Lord. You are happy to be here today. Please rise to your feet. Your hands lifted with loud voices. Begin to magnify the name of the Lord. Worship his majesty. Celebrate his faithfulness. We slept and we awoke because he sustained us. It's not by our power, it's not by our might, but by his spirit. For by might shall no man prevail. For it's not of he that will it, nor of he that run it, but of God that showeth mercy. Celebrate the mercies of God. Celebrate his goodness. Celebrate his mercies. He has done all things well. For blessed is he whom he chooses and causes to approach unto the throne of grace. He said we shall be satisfied with goodness of his house. Celebrate the goodness of God's house today in your life. He has done you well. He has done me well. My Father, my God, the very God of Bishop David Oribo, who have returned this morning to worship, to praise, to celebrate your faithfulness. You are a good God. No one compares to you. You are a good God. No one compares to you. You have done all things well. Receive our praises. Receive our thanksgiving in the name of Jesus Christ. Today is our covenant of breaking the national causes. My Father, my God, send the word that would destroy every curse around our lives. Send that word, the right word. Send that word, the sent word. Send that word, the word in season. In the name of Jesus Christ, is somebody thanking God this morning? Are you celebrating the, oh, His Majesty? Give Him glory. Give Him praise. He has done all things well. Now ask Him to send your word. Your word that will make a difference in your life. That will break every curse that was hanging around you. My Father, my God, I know you have good things for me reserved in this house. My Father, everything that is contrary, we reject and rebuke in the name of Jesus. Send that word, the right word, that will destroy every curse, transitional, every cause, generational, every call, whatever they may be, destroy them by the power of your word this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. We want to thank you this morning for your marvelous helps. We want to thank you this morning for your marvelous helps. You have done all things well. Everything we are, we are by your grace. For by my shall no man prevail. We are what we are today, standing in the altar, because you have made it so. We have returned with a heart of gratitude, a heart of praise, a heart of worship. Is somebody thanking God this morning? Give him glory, give him praise. He is worthy of our praise. Give him praise, give him glory. He is worthy of our praise. In the name of Jesus Christ, my Father, that word has been for me today. Let it come, your word of power. Let it come, your word of grace. Let it come, your word of celebration. Take all the glory forever. In Jesus' mighty name, we have given thanks. I know you have testimonies to share with the brethren. Please go to the major entrances and document it with the pastors. You'll be given time to share in the course of the service. And because you are here today, you are blessed. In the name of Jesus, your hands together for the Lord as we go to the choir. And we know that there are angels all around. Let us praise Jesus. Yeah. 
give him praise this morning.
for Jesus, excited to be in his presence, put those hands together for Jesus, and give him a shout of Hosanna. Please, you may be seated. We welcome ourselves to this service this morning as we read together Psalms 124. Psalms chapter 124, we read verse 1 to the last verse. We read alternately, I read verse 1, you read the next verse. Psalms 1 to 4. If it had not been the Lord who was on our side, now may Israel say. Verse 2, church. If it had not been the Lord who was on our side, when men rose up against us, they had swallowed us up quick when their wrath was kindled against us. Verse 4. Then the waters had overwhelmed us. The stream had gone over our soul. Then the proud waters had gone over our soul. Verse 6. Blessed be the Lord, who has not given us as a prey to their teeth. Our soul is escaped as a bed out of the snare of the fowlers. The snare is broken, and we are escaped. And verse 8, together, one to go. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. In this service, our escape shall be established. You are welcome to church. Put your hands together for Jesus. Hallelujah. For this first service this morning, we shall be taking the congregational hymn, Standing on the Promise of God, while the choir leads, we all stand to sing along. Let's rise, church.
Together for the Lord and be seated. Praise the Lord. Please listen attentively to the faith tabernacle announcement for this first service. Number one, praise the Lord. To the glory of God, our corporate church outreach was a great success. With about 7,000 souls saved and several other thousands invited for service across our WSF areas. Let's give Jesus a bigger, bigger hand of praise. And this is as at the time of this report. May everyone reached for Jesus be established in the faith and this church for life. 
And may everyone actively engaging in this season be openly rewarded in Jesus' name. Number two, good news. <laughs> to the glory of God, a number of kingdom promoters are out to see all converts and challenged members brought to church. Therefore, the church is in search of transporters for the massive harvest of souls that God has given to us in this season. We are admonished to provide necessary details at our various WSF area offices on the church website also by clicking on the transportation banner or using the transportation or transporters update link circulated on our various WSF platforms. Number three, Covenant Hour of Prayer continues tomorrow, Monday through Saturday. Remember this whole thing, over 600 locations across Lagos and Otter. The time again, 5.30 to 6.30 a.m. However, praise the Lord. Number four, praise the Lord. Our Believers Foundation class, BFC, for all our new converts and new members holds tomorrow, Monday. Note that this can be either live at any of our BFC centers across Lagos, Otter, and Enverance, or online on the link displayed. Details on the closest location to all our new converts and new members shall be sent via SMS, the time 6 to 7.30 p.m. Number five, praise the Lord. Midweek service holds this coming Wednesday, both here in Canaan Land and at all Zona Fellowship Centers in Lagos, Otter, and Enverance. Remember, we shall be waiting on the Lord in a fast and break with the communion. The time again is 6 p.m. Number six, praise the Lord. Easter Youth Alive Conference, EAC 2024. Let's make that club bigger and better for the Lord. This comes up this week from Thursday 28th through Saturday 30th March 2024. The theme is Renewal. All, we shall all be gathered across our various clusters across Lagos. However, all areas in Otter will be gathered here in Canaan land. Youth are encouraged to prayerfully prepare and plan to attend. Kindly follow all Utah Life social media handles for more details. Number seven, good news. <laughs> Yesterday, there was a massive response of members to the Kingdom Care Covenant as many brought non-perishable food items and clothing items to the Central Collection Center. Let's give Jesus a big hand for that. To the glory of God, our distribution commences this coming Wednesday in over 200 distribution centers. As part of our continuous commitment to the Kingdom Care Covenant, the Central Collection Centers will be open to receive and distribute items from those bringing them and to members who require them every Saturday following laid down modalities. Number eight, praise the Lord. Be reminded that our employment portal is up and running with great responses. Please visit the link display to register. Number 10, good news. Four intending couples wear this coming Saturday. We are admonished to stand in the gap for them in prayers and share in their joy. The time again is 11 a.m. Number 11, praise the Lord. Be reminded to share your testimonies of the mighty acts of God at the links we find displayed on the screen. Number 12, Winner's Satellite Fellowship. Our House Wars Fellowship holds this coming Saturday at our WSF centers across Lagos and Otter. Remember, we shall be praying for one another, inviting neighbor to partake in this fellowship time the time again is 5 to 6 p.m. For all our new converts and new members, please note that we do not collect offerings at our home cell meetings. This is without prejudice to those who pay for buses 
or paid the way of other members or converts to and from church. Finally, number 13, good news. Next Sunday, March 30th, 2024, shall be our special Easter Miracle Banquet. It shall also double as our special end-of-the-month Thanksgiving marriage and children dedication service. The resurrection power will be moving amongst us. Come expecting an encounter with a prophetic word. It shall be a service to be much remembered. Please come along with your converts, invitees, and other loved ones for an encounter of a lifetime. There shall be three services, the times 6 a.m., 7.55 a.m., 9.50 a.m. Jesus is Lord. Please give Jesus a big, big hand of praise. In this service this morning, it is testimony time. Say it confidently, my breakthrough time. Please listen to the following documented testimonies, and you shall return blessed this morning in Jesus' name. Number one, 37 years marital spell destroyed. I had not witnessed our girl getting married for 37 years. Those that got married ended up being widow. I asked my father what the problem could be, and he said it was a result of the scarcity of women in our family. A native doctor was invited, and that was the outcome. I told myself that, my, I, told myself that I cannot be involved because I am a winner, a child of God. I came to this church for this purpose, and the bishop said, when a thief is caught, he returns what he stole. I key into this word and decided that the devil oppression, oppression must stop. That year, God cleared all barriers on our ways. Amen. Please put your hands together for Jesus. And the next year, more than 11 ladies have married in my family to the glory of God. Amen. Those that divorce are getting reconciled with their husband. I return all the glory to God. The testifier is Deacon Moses Uwase. Please put those wonderful hands again together for Jesus this morning. Number two, rescued from family idol via prophetic declaration. In my family, there is an idol that every grandson must worship. The moment they began to succeed in life, they died at the age of 35. When I was 17 years old, my father fearfully asked me to leave the house to a distant place for refuge from the idol. So I came to Nigeria from Ghana. However, in January 2022, I joined this commission and gave my life to Jesus. Put your hands together for Jesus. In November 2022, during the week, spiritual week of emphasis, and the first day, Bishop David Yudeko said that the three-day fasting would change something in our lives. I receive and believe those words. And I engage with my heart. On the second day, he pointed in my direction and said, You are the one I am talking to. That power flow." That power following you is caused from today. I believe and I declare I was the one the bishop was talking to. Lo and behold, on the third day, my father called me to inform me that the family idol has disappeared. <laughs> Hallelujah. 
and was nowhere to be found. I am now free, rescued from this idol. I return all the glory to God. The testifier is Samuel Wisdom. Put those wonderful hands together for Jesus because you are returning with your own testimony today in Jesus' name. For those testimonies of Jesus, will you give Jesus a big hand of praise? This morning is my privilege to welcome a number of us who are here today worshiping God for the first time on a Sunday like this. If today is your first time at the Faith Tabernacle on a Sunday like this, I'd like you in your seated position to just lift up your hand unto the Lord and just let's identify you. Today is your first time. Will you give Jesus a big hand of praise for these precious people? Just lift your hand and wave it to Jesus. Everyone who is here for the first time, God bless you mightily. Please keep your hand lifted. Our officials will put into your hands right now a welcome package. Along with it, you'll be given a card that you need to fill. Keep your hand lifted until those materials reach onto you, and then you may then put down your hands. Please ensure that you get your copy. For those who may be unable to lift their hands, those who are around them, please indicate on their behalf and ensure that they pick up those materials at this very moment. Praise God. I want to especially welcome you on behalf of Jesus Christ, who is the head of the Church Universal and is serving the apostle over this commission, Bishop David Oedipo. What is unique about this church? This church is ordained by God as a mountain of divine intervention, where every issue that has defied solutions can be supernaturally perfected. Our turnaround God has been at work in this commission for over four decades, surprising members of this church with unimaginable testimonies as they believe. If you will endeavor to abide in this church, and commit to following every instruction that you receive here for the next three months, the Lord God will bless you openly as he did to Obedidom. Since God is no respecter of persons, expect the turnaround God to visit you also upon this mountain as you believe. I want to welcome you today to this turnaround family. And may today be your entry into the realms of divine intervention that will result in the delivery of your long-awaited testimonies in the name of Jesus Christ. Therefore, to all of our first-time worshipers, we say to you, welcome home. Give Jesus a big, big hand of praise, everybody. He's worthy of all the glory. At this point, may I request for all our first-time worshipers to please rise for a word of prayer and blessing. All of our first-time worshipers, please rise on your feet right now for a word of prayer and blessing. Now, bow your heads as we pray. Our Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you this morning for these precious people that you have brought by your mighty hand. Lord, you brought them for a blessing. Therefore, by your authority today, we declare each one of them blessed in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we declare that whatever any of these precious ones may have left behind as a concern to come into your presence today, let every such concern be converted to an open testimony. You have brought them on this covenant day of breaking generational causes. Let every long-standing, age-long cause upon any one of their lives be broken by your power today. Above all, for any of them who is yet to know Jesus as Lord and Savior, may today be for them the day of their salvation. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, thank you, mighty God. In Jesus' precious name we have prayed. Somebody believe, say loud, Amen. It is done. Please be seated. Ensure that you fill out the card that has been given to you and submit it to the official that is closest to you. Once again, you are welcome. God bless you. Give Jesus a big hand of praise. Right now, in this covenant day of breaking generation, of course, this service, we shall be going before the Lord in personal supplication, which we shall be presenting our expectation for this service before the Lord. Matthew 21 and verse 22, Jesus speaking, and he says, And all things whatsoever ye shall ask in prayer, believing ye shall receive. 
as you put forth your expectation this morning, you will return with your answer in the name of Jesus Christ. Please, let's rise to our feet as we lift our voice to heaven and cry unto our God. God is hearing. Pray right now and you are receiving your answers. Somebody will believe God has heard you. Why not lift your hands and voice and give God thanks right now? Because you have asked, you have believed, and you have received. Father, we thank you. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' precious name we have prayed. So shall it be. In Jesus' mighty name. Please give Jesus a big hand of praise and be seated. Somebody shout aloud, hallelujah. hallelujah. Right now in this service, it's offering time. 
Can you say, believe in amen? amen? Therefore, properly put together right now all your financial seed that you have brought to the house of God to worship the God who is never in need. That includes your tithe. 10% of God's increases upon your life. A worship seed and another kind of financial seed that you have brought today. Please make sure that your seed are all clearly labeled and well packaged. Please be reminded also that you can give in cash, properly packaged in an envelope. You can give by check in favor of Faith Tabernacle Canaan Land. You can also take advantage of any of our electronic giving platforms. Please look at the screen right now. You'll find all the required information there. Praise the Lord. Our uncle scripture today as we give in this service shall be from Zechariah chapter 8 and verse 12. Zechariah 8, 12. The scripture says, For the seed shall be prosperous. Can I hear loud amen? amen. The vine shall give her fruit. The ground shall give her increase. And the heaven shall give their due. And God will cause you and I to possess all these things. Can I hear believing? Amen. Amen. Please rise upon your feet as you take your seed in your hand. Why don't you lift it up unto God? Give him thanks because according to his word, this seed shall be prosperous. According to his word, this seed will bring back fruits, we bring increases and we'll open your heaven and my heavens. Thank him. Praise him. Glorify his name. Thank him for accepting your seat today and for fulfilling his word. Father, we give you thanks and praise. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Please keep your seat lifted, Father, in Jesus' name. In accordance with your word, we have come with financial seat to worship you because we love you. Let our seat be acceptable. According to your word, for every giver today, let this seed launch each one into our realms of financial prosperity. Amen. This hand shall never lack again. Amen. Begin to enjoy financial increases, Amen. even beginning from this moment. Amen. So shall it be. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. And louder and believing, amen. amen. Please take your seat comfortably. And cast your seed with joy as we welcome the faith tabernacle choir to minister.
Yeah. 
Hallelujah. Shall we lift up our two hands to heaven this morning and one more time? Bless the name of the Lord for bringing you and I to cause the chains on our lives falling, the chains on our health, the chains on our business and career, the chains on our destiny. Would you give him thanks? Give him thanks. In Jesus' precious name, we have given thanks. Amen. You have come to a house of rescue today. Every force pursuing you to hurt you will turn their back. Every trace of generational crosses will lose their grip of your life. <laughs> Behind most challenges of life are crosses. Proverbs 26 and verse 2. It said, As the bird for flying by wandering and the swallow by flying. So the curse, costless, shall not come. Ogwai Rilanja, we're fighting in most cases invisible battles. You can't tell where it's coming from, but you can feel the impact. Oh, but I'll read and reach your warrior. Whatever has been pursuing after your life to hurt you in the realm of the unseen, the invisible God will rout them today. Oh, Subarele, oh, oh, Subarele, oh, oh, Batari. You are what the O Lord. You are what the Sable God. My name is Walker. You are free from every invisible siege on your life today. <laughs> it's known by the grace of election, this is a house of rescue. The hour has come to liberate the world from all oppressions of the devil through the preaching of the word of faith, and I'm sending you to undertake this task. Your long-awaited liberty comes through today. The curse of career instability, the curse of business frustration, the curse of <laughs> deliberating health, the curse of marital unsettlement, whatever represents a curse, around anyone's life is overturned today. The curse of jealousy and envy that is overturned today. But we find rest, we find rescue, we find liberation by learning at his feet. Come and learn at my feet and you find rest for your souls. 
Come and learn. Come and learn. When I pray over you, the chain is broken. They're broken. But to keep the chains from reforming, you need light. You need light. And that's where most of us fail. We get a relief and we move until you get back to the bandage. You need to know the root and how to keep it off your territory. Jesus, teach us today. Amen. And let your power go through the teaching Amen. to establish everyone's liberty. Amen. Let this covenant day of breaking the national causes answer to his name. Amen. Let every short down destiny be reopened. Amen. Let every spiritual life under bandage be liberated. Amen. Let every chain of reproach, shame and reproach be broken. Yeah. And let your name be glorified. Yeah. In Jesus' name. Yeah. Give the Lord a big hand of praise. I'm pleased to be seated. Serving God and the interest of his, and the interest of his kingdom pays the unmatchable, the incomparable. It pays beyond what skill, qualification, strength, business exploits can handle. And one verse like we have said, which is our anchor, clearly defines that. Thou shalt serve the Lord thy God, and he shall bless. His blessings make rich and add no sorrow, and he shall bless. Many people see some things called blessing, but loaded with sorrow, wrapped up with sorrow, depression night and day. His blessings make rich and add no sorrow. Thou shalt serve, he shall bless. I mean sorrow-free blessings. Depression free blessings, <laughs> ever jumping blessings, ever laughing blessings. And I will take something away from the midst of thee. What? <laughs> I will not watch you molested by sickness, assaulted by disease, and destroyed by ill health. I will take. I will take. It's part of your return for serving me. I will take. That's not, his, that's not his insurance. That's immunity against the assault of sickness and disease. I will take. Now, you shall not be barren, nor cast you young in the land. And barrenness in scriptures is about anything that is not productive. From your body to the walls of your hand to anything. You shall not be barren. That means whatever you do shall prosper. <laughs> No, cast a young in the land, no aborted business, no aborted baby, no aborted career. And then on top of it, the number of your days, I will fulfill. I'm responsible. I'm in charge. I'm in control. I will ensure that anything that wants to do there will die in your place. The number of your days, I, God, will fulfill. What a package. So you can't see that as a reality and be forced to serve God. You will jump at it. <laughs> that is a, a job without application, without interview, and has this tremendous offer. No, you jump. You jump. We have had it, but we have not seen it, so we, we are still doubting it. We are still contemplating, is that true? Can it be true? Is it working? How can I be sure? But when you see it, the debate will be over. Serving God and the interest of his kingdom pays the unmatchable. So it's not mere religious activity, therefore, or hobby. 
serving God is a big time business. He said, what? Yes. Jesus said, don't you think I must be about my father's business? And what business? John 18, 37, to this end was I born, for this cause came out to the world, to be a witness to the truth. That's the business. To bring the good news down to the world. That's the business. And by that business, is seated far above today. All principalities and powers and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. What a business. That at the name of Jesus, they should bow. What a business. And what a <laughs> and amazing return. And they said, don't you think I must be about my father's business? Luke 249. So service in the vineyard of the Lord is big time business. Romans 12, verse 11, the word says, not slothful in business, but fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. Don't see it as a hobby. Don't see it as a church activity. Say serving God as business and be fervent in your engagement. Be fervent in your engagement. It brings you unmatchable returns. Platforms for kingdom stewardship include praying for the flow of eternal life, the word of eternal life that will establish new converts and members in the faith and in this church. Praying for the word of God to go forth. The word of eternal life that establishes people in the faith. In John chapter 6 and verse 66 to 68, Jesus asked his disciples, who you do not go away, whither shall we go from thee? For thou hast the word of eternal life. When the word of eternal life is going forth, people gather, they gather, they gather, they gather. It's good news from heaven, they gather. Good news from heaven, they gather. So you pray, we pray, for God's word of eternal life to keep going forth in our services that will lead to the establishment of our new converts and members in the faith and in this church. Can I hear your amen? amen. Number two platform is praying for supernatural intervention for the needs of members to be met so they can abide in the faith for life. When goodness and mercy follows you, all the days of your life. You will dwell in his house forever. You will dwell in his house forever. Psalm 23, verse 6. So we pray for God to clear the challenges of the path of God's people so they can be established in the kingdom of life for life. Also remember that whatever good thing you do, the same you receive from the Lord. You can't pray for somebody's breakthrough and, begin, and become and remain a victim of breakdown. You are praying for somebody's breakthrough. A family cannot eat, cannot drink. You are praying for God to intervene and set them free. You are receiving your own liberty in the process. Can I hear you, amen? amen. Somebody's praying for a family, a challenged family that's believing God for children. And she also has a need for children. We have had such testimonies here, many of them. As they are praying for them, God is answering them also. Ephesians 6 and verse 8. Whatever good thing any man does, that same shall receive from the Lord. The third platform is engagement in financial stewardship. Investing financially in kingdom promotion and divorce. Investing financially in kingdom investment and divorce. David said, and now, because I've set my affection, 1 Chronicles 29, verse 3, to the house of my God, I have of my own proper goods of gold and silver, which I've given to the house of my God, over and above all that I've prepared for the holy house. Serving God with one's 
God-given means keeps the means flowing. He keeps supplying, multiplying. People need to know that, sir. Now, interestingly, God will never ask you to give but from what he has given you. As God has blessed everyone, even so let him give. He never asked Abraham to give Isaac until he gave him Isaac. So, if there before a willing mind, it's accepted according to what a man has, not what he has not. All this coerced offering taking is not necessary. It's, it's not the God way. <laughs> you know, it, it's not you giving God. It's you returning from what He gave you. So there's nothing to brag about there, my friend. Nothing. What have you have not received? <laughs> there is nothing. You know, I, I gave one thousand. From where? From what He gave you. In fact, I gave two hundred naira for that transportation. For well, that, my brother, to be to come to church. From where? From what he gave you? <laughs> Deuteronomy 26 and verse 17. As God has blessed everyone, even so, let him give from that blessing. <laughs> you know what that is? Acknowledgement of receipt. Acknowledgement of receipt of his blessings. And when the receipt is not there, they believe that your address has changed. So you don't receive the next pack. <laughs> if you understand, you'll be the last giver that I'm giving out of what he gave me. He entrusted it to me, and I'm taking steps to be counted faithful. It's an entrustment. Riches in the kingdom of achievement is an entrustment. Don't let it enter your head. It's an entrustment. If he, if he removes his hand one day, sir, God forbid that you see ordinary paper and call it money. You better wake up. <laughs> Giving should be a delight, not a pressure. It should be a delight. It's coming from what he gave you and from what he gave me. Praise God. Somebody's changing level. <laughs> May serving God be a delight for you yeah. all the days of your life. Yeah. No, one, no one here will miss it. Yeah. No one that will be mistaken for a beggar all through life. Yeah. Commitment to giving and receiving entitles us to supernatural supplies from God. No church communicated with him concerning giving and receiving, but you only. Therefore, my God shall supply all your needs according to riches in glory. So don't quote 419 <laughs> without taking care of verse 15. There's a communication in giving and receiving before God is committed to supplying all of your needs and my needs according to riches in glory. Next, stay committed to kingdom care covenant as a lifestyle. Let the needs of others concern you. Don't shut your eyes of mercy from those who are grinning and groaning in life when it's in your power to assist. Bear ye one another's burden, thereby fulfilling the law of Christ. Galatians chapter 6. And verse 2. Do good to all men, to all men, but especially the day of the household of faith. Verse 10. Those who show mercy don't lack mercy. Those who show favor don't lack favor. People don't lack what they give, they only lack what they keep. You can't show favor, not for sure, but out of love and lack favor. 
You can't show mercies. Not to be called the great woman of God, no. <laughs> Out of compassion, you don't run out of mercy. There is nothing you give that you are permitted to lack. Show mercies. You never lack it. Show favor. You never lack it. Thank you, Jesus. What to do for a stewardship to qualify for the rewards? One, we must keep serving God as a privilege and not as a burden. Please. Jeremiah 23, verse 33 to 40. And when the people are the prophet or a priest shall, be, shall ask thee, what is the burden of the Lord? Thou shalt say unto them, what burden? I will even forsake you, said the Lord. Burden. And as for the people and the priest, as for the prophet and the priest, and the people that shall say the burden of the Lord, I will even punish that man and his house. <laughs> Thus shall ye say one to another, one to, everyone to his neighbor, and everyone to his brother, what has the Lord answered, and what has the Lord spoken? Don't let God's instructions be a burden to you. It has a counter effect on our lives. Enjoy it. Let his commandments suit you at all times. And the body of the Lord shall ye mention no more, for every man's word shall be his body. For you have perverted the words of the living God, of the Lord of hosts, our God. Now, verse 37. Thus shall ye say one to another, What has the Lord answered, and what has the Lord spoken? But, 38. Since he said the body of the Lord, therefore thus said the Lord, because he said this word, the body of the Lord, and I've sent unto you, saying, You shall not see the body of the Lord. He said, Therefore, behold, I even I will utterly forget you. Say, God forbid. <laughs> and I'll forsake you in the city that I gave you and your fathers and cast you out of my presence. Don't ever see serving Jesus as a burden. It's absolutely a privilege. Brethren, see your calling. How no many mighty men after the flesh are called. Not many wise. God has chosen the foolish to confound the wise. The things that are not to confound the things that are. There are no flesh to glory in his presence. Your choice and my choice is purely an election of grace. Nothing else. Don't weary God with your anti-scriptural comments. Enjoy it. Don't ease all around your unit. If not for church, can I be in the kind of group of these people? Go and, go and look for another group. <laughs> you know, pride is a poison. Its effect is far more devastating than stage 10 cancer. It ate up Aaron on his seat. <laughs> Worms ate him up. My God, he was the king, that's the meaning. Because he gave no God the glory. Enjoy it, don't. Okay, to who? The old one like a drop of water from his, from his finger. So how much do you weigh in that? How much do I weigh in that? Come down. Um, you are the mighty hand of God. I think due time may exhort. You are going places, oh. <laughs> but meekness is what defines the limits of everybody's expansion. Meekness. Blessed are they may, for they shall inherit it. Yeah. We must serve God diligently. There are too many casual workers. Well, I can do my best. I've done my best. Blah, blah, blah. Serve God diligently. The, the word that you have made business likely. Business likely, as if we are being marked. Business likely, as if we are writing an exam. Business likely. 
Okay, get four souls. <laughs> and then, well, I'm trying my best. You have done your best, you don't got one. Where's your best? <laughs> he gave to everyone. Everyone has capacity to deliver. Gave to everyone. Gave to everyone. You didn't get one out of four. I have done my best. You didn't do anything. Business likely. It does not reward the force, it rewards us. How many souls have we even prayed over since this thing started? You know, how many did you ever mention anybody in prayer? <laughs> okay, check on your friends, check on your neighbors. Did you check on anyone? It's a reward of them that diligently seek him. No casual approach ever makes impact in any field. No casual approach ever makes impact in any field. No casual approach ever makes impact in any field. For a social to be rewarded, it must be result-oriented, result-driven. Result-oriented, result-driven. Every aspect of ministry they requires diligence for delivery. No shortcut. In all labor, there is profit. We we'll talk of the leaves. Tends only to penury. Proverbs 14, 23. Finally, we must have God tirelessly. <laughs> Be steadfast or movable. Always abandon the words of the Lord for as much as He know that at the end He shall speak. Though it tarries, wait for it. It shall surely come to pass. It shall not tarry. Habakkuk chapter 2 and verse 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58. Blessed is that our whom is Lord. When they come, shall find so, so do it. I tell you, verily, we'll make him pastor over all his house. Matthew 24, verse 47. We serve entirely say, to maximize the returns on our service. Now, quickly, let's itemize some returns from kingdom stewardship. One, it guarantees express answers to prayers. John 15, 16. You go after souls. Whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give it to you. You engage in fasting and prayers. In Isaiah 58 and verse 9, he said, I shall call, then shall thou call, and the Lord shall answer. You shall cry, and he will say, Here I am. You engage in fasting and prayer and serving God and promoting his kingdom. You experience express answer to your prayers. Number two, divine exemption from evil day, from the evil day. You are divinely exempted in evil time. It doesn't touch you. It doesn't scratch you. Malachi 3, verse 17 and 18. The word said, and they shall be mine. They said, the Lord, in that day when I make up my jewels, and I will spare them as a man spare his, his own son that serves him. Then shall you return, the son between the righteous and the wicked, between him that serveth God and him that serveth him not. Chapter 4, verse 1. For the day come that shall burn like an oven. All the proud, forget them, they shall be stubborn. The day that comes, we burn them up, leave them with neither root nor branch. But unto you that fear my name and are serving me, shall the son of righteousness arise with his the wing. You will be going, growing up and going forth as fatted calves in the time of a burn down. Exemption through serving God. This global heat on the earth will not touch you. Yeah. It will touch your family. Yeah. Exemption from the evil day. Number three. It's 
secures access to our high places. Abaco 3 2, revive their work of God in the midst of the year, make known their power. And then verse 17, although the fig tree may not blossom, while you are doing that, they are mocking you. But keep rejoicing as you do it, the Lord will show up and make you feel like a spirit and get you up upon your high places. It's always going through a gestation period. You don't put your grain of maize in the field in the earth today and carry your basket for harvest tomorrow. It goes through a process underneath the earth. And then it shoots out two blades. It's coming. It's not lost. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. As you engage in praying, the Bible fanning prayers, and you look at your wasting time, no. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. And it's taking you to higher places. That's the plan. You turn into righteousness, you are just stars forever and ever. Taking you there. Taking you there. Some are going to hit their mark of many during this first half of the year yeah. that will cause their stars to blossom. Yeah. Can I hear your loudest amen? Yeah. On too much is given, much is required. When you hit the benchmark of many, as far as God is concerned, it changes your story supernaturally. So we are going towards many, going towards as I hit the many, my benchmark of many with God, something breaks forth. So watch out for it. Like we say here, when your cloud is full, your rain must fall. Now, secure establishment in the faith, number four. Every branch in me that bears fruit, I will keep feet so it can keep bearing more fruit. John 15, 2. Luke 13, 6 to 9. Cut it down. Why come to the ground? I waited for it to bring forth fruit. It brought white olive. What will I have done that I have not done? Cut it down. Why occupying space for nothing? No one shall be cut down. So serving God is a must to keep alive in the faith. Serving God is a must. And finally, it secures eternity with Christ. How many are set for heaven here? How many truly believe in heaven? How many believe in heaven? How many believe that heaven is real? Because the way the gospel, in quote, is going, uh, <laughs> they will soon build the tabernacle here and call it heaven. They will soon build a tabernacle here and call it what? My friend, heaven is real. Jesus is still busy building. Man shall say heaven. There are no mere stories. We shall make it. Amen. He said, it's just not because of the, but because your names are written in the book of life. So serving God secures our place in eternity. Luke chapter 10, verse 17. To 19, and serving God secures our eternity. Paul, the apostle said, Henceforth, I see a crown of righteousness laid before me, which God, a righteous judge, that lived in that day, and not only to me, but unto all them that love is appearing, who are serving to spread the gospel, because until the gospel is preached throughout all nations, it will not come. So heaven is real. Heaven is real. We shall all make it. Amen. We shall all make it. Amen. They call it eternity. Eternity means time without end. We have limited time here, but we have eternity waiting. We shall not miss it. Amen. Now, today is our covenant day of breaking generational crosses. I mentioned earlier that crosses are real. The effect is visible, but the source is mostly invisible. The source is mostly invisible. 
the effect cannot be denied. But the source is <laughs> not what you can put your hand on in most cases. I've identified five of those sources and how Christ has dealt with them on our behalf so you can walk in liberty all your days. Can I hear your amen? amen. Again, Proverbs 26 and verse 2. As the bird by wandering and the swallow by flying, so the curse causeless shall not Behind every negative activities around our life, there are forces behind the scene. Number one here is the cross of God. We saw God inflicted curses on mankind in Genesis 3, 16 to 19. Adam and Eve had their shares. I greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. Thy sorrow shall not bring. There are causes. To Abraham, you will swear. Adam, you will swear. You will eat bread out of this. I planted a garden for you for free. You abused it. Go ahead. You shall not serve any other God. You carry a cause. Exodus 24 and 5. The cause of the Lord is the house of the thief. So, <laughs> Zechariah chapter 5 and verse 4. That is the cause of God that ravages the earth. But his mercies endures forever. Every cross of God is revertible by repentance. Every cross of God is reversible by repentance. Every cross of God is revertible by repentance. The way out is obedience. <laughs> obedience to what averts the cause. And what averts the cause? Repentance. Timely repentance. Esau had no space to repent. The time and lapsed. Disobedience is at the root of the cause of God. As soon as they get no obedience, only obedience can revert it. Disobedience de demands repentance. For instance, let him that steal, steal no more. So you can be free from the cause. Ephesians 4.28. Then we have the cause of the law listed out there in this chapter 28 and verse 15 to 63. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken to the voice of the Lord your God, to observe and to do this commandment, the that which I command it this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. These are the curses of the law, law listed up until verse 86. They can be summarized on that list of heads, like Egan will teach. 
poverty, sickness, and death. The cause of the law have those three major expressions. Poverty, sickness, and death. We can all read it and classify them. But Jesus came to rescue mankind from the cause of the law. Christ has redeemed us from the cause of the law. Galatians 3, 13 and 14. Being made a cause for us, what is written, cause is every man that hangs upon the tree. So redemption is the only escape from the cause of the law. Redemption is the capital kill for the cause of the law. Until one is saved, the cause of the law will keep ravaging his life. For Christ has redeemed us from the cross of the law. We made the cause for us. It's written, cause every man to hang it upon the tree. If you see these causes of the law, they are forever, forever, forever. They are generational. They are generational. They are generational in nature. How shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? Hebrews chapter 2, verse 3. How shall we escape? There is no escaping from the curse of the law without being saved. Not just going to church. Not just being recognized by everybody as being a church person. But being born again. Be born again. The way of And stay in love with God because love is the fulfilling of the law. Be born again and stay in love. Romans 13, 10. He said, love walketh no ear to his neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. Love is the fulfilling. So, work in love and you have fulfilled the law. And the cause of the law has no more hold on your life. For we know that all things work together for them that love God and that God according to his purpose. And now we come to number three, the cross of devils. Now, the cause of God rides on disobedience. The cause of the law Rights on breaking the law. But the cause of the devil of devils, though you are doing right, motivates him to inflict a cause. You don't have to do anything wrong. He's looking for those who are trying to do things right to hit a devil. Have you considered my servant Joe? God said, There's no man that came out upon the earth, man that feared God and eschewed evil, a perfect man. So that's what I'm looking for him. <laughs> Simon, Simon, said, I'm hunting for you. Why Simon? Because Judas was there. <laughs> Why not Thomas? No. He's always hunting for the precious souls. And what a place you have come. This one place where the devil know, knows that he has no power. Satan has no power Hallelujah. on this ground. Hallelujah. So everyone under the siege of satanic causes inflicted through his agents at any point in time, those causes turn back on their heads. Yeah. It was me he told, the hour has come, to liberate the world from all oppressions of the devil, including curses. Amen. All oppressions. We got into a nation, the nation of Liberia, years ago, and there was this queen of Sheba that was very notorious witch. From stories, they sacrificed human beings to him, went to her. We landed in town, moved in straight to the hotel where she was. She packed out on the spot and left the city unceremoniously. <laughs> Light and darkness. No meeting point. Yes, sir. sir, everyone that carried a seed of darkness that's tormenting your life, 
in this service, you are declared free. Yeah. Years ago, I took a witch out, notorious witch. Not that they call her witch, she agrees she's a witch. Tormenting the family. I took her to a no man's land with one of my fellows. And I said, anything I tell you to do, now begin to do it. Now. Lie down. Lay down. Lay down, face up. Now, stand up. Walk straight to the road river. I said, please, if I step, I will die. I said, die. <laughs> I asked him a question. I asked him a question. I said, why can't the devil come here to help you? Don't they call him the power of darkness? He said, as long as you are here, he cannot come. Whatever devil follows who he has said. Get off your back right now. Yeah. I challenge those devils as one with authority from Jesus. Get off the back of anyone. Yeah. And get off now. Yeah. You heard the story in that testimony. The idol disappears. Yes. <coughs> From Nigeria to Ghana. By a word. So wherever that challenge is, I cause the root thereof. <laughs> Lift up your right hand to heaven and declare your liberty. You can't force her here. Satan, you can't force her here. You had it now. You had it. You can't force her here. Those terrible idols, you can't force her here. You can't function here. In Jesus' precious name we have prayed. Surely there is no enchantment against Jacob, no divination against Israel. Every enchantment against your life, your destiny, your family, returns back to sender. <laughs> Every enchantment against your children, your spouse, your grandchildren, returns back to sender. <laughs> Every enchantment against your health returns back to sender. There is no enchantment against Jacob, no divination against Israel. From this time it shall be said of Jacob and of Israel, what has God wrought? Not what has the devil done again. What has God done? Not what has the devil done again. In the precious name of Jesus, Satan is declared out of the equation of your life. The way out, be born again. New birth means translation from the kingdom of darkness, the kingdom of light. There's no way darkness can go for an arrest in, in the midst of light. When you are translated, you have escaped. New birth means being raised together with Christ and being made to sit together with him in heavenly places. We are not where they can operate. Be born again. Don't toy with the word new birth. 
don't make God your provider when he's not your savior. <laughs> there is no provider that is safe. Please come under that covering. Make Jesus the Lord of your life. And what the devil just passed by you. It, it can't come in. Can't come in. Light and darkness cannot coexist. When you are saved, you are still with Christ in heavenly places far above all principalities and powers. So you are of the realm of torment, of the realm of torture. Thank you, Jesus. Number two, we are be committed to serving God. When God blesses, it cannot be reversed by any devil. God has blessed, and I cannot reverse it. No devil can reverse the blessing of God. It's out, outside their range. It's not nothing that my enemies hurt you. Keep serving him. You see Satan fall like lightning from heaven. And you walk upon servants and scorpions and overall the past of the enemy and not sure my enemies hurt you. It's all in the package. Luke 10, 17 to 19. And now we have the cause of man. The cause of man, number four. The cause of man. Surely they shall gather together, Isaiah 54 and verse 15. But not by me. I know that gather together against you shall fall for your sake. Or that gather against you shall fall for your sake. Yeah. Balaam gathered with them. He gathered with Balak. He fell. Or that gather against you shall fall for your sake. Yeah. Behold, surely they shall gather together, but not by me. And not that gather together against you, they shall fall for your sake. Verse 17, for no weapon formed against you shall prosper. And every time you shall write against you, judgment, you shall condemn. <laughs> you shall condemn. Now, 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 uh, you, not, not God, you shall condemn. So you wake up in the night and say, now, every gang up against me from many quarters on the earth, you are condemned. You felt some things around you. Say, no, I condemn you in the name of Jesus. Amen. And so I say that the name, can they stand the name? <laughs> the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run to it and they are saved. So I, I would say, you inflict the name on them. Yes. Inflict. You know what David said against Goliath? When Goliath cursed him in the name of his God, David replied, He said, I come to you in the name of the Lord God of Israel. <laughs> Today I will bring down your head. Did it happen or not? Don't let the enemy have the final say. Don't let the enemy have the final say. Give it back to them. Give it back in hard currency. Give it back to them. Give it back to them. No one targets this life and escape. No. Because you are precious in my sight, I will give men for thee. Before I also. As I have 43 and verse 4. Because thou art precious in my sight, therefore will I give men for thee and pick for thy ransom. Come mess you up. Come mess you up. There are things I can't say on this platform, but uh, they are terrible. They are terrible. A number of them without my knowledge. <laughs> Don't touch. Don't touch. Don't touch. Say, thou shalt condemn. That means I'm, you are responsible. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. And the arrangement is of me, said the Lord. So you are responsible to say you are condemned. 
Root out. And then they're out. Throw down. And then they're down. From today, any eye of man and any hand of man against God's agenda for your life is declared condemned. The same way Goliath fell, they are declared fallen. In 1979, I came by a revelation from A. Allen. The Lord kill it and he make it alive. First Samuel chapter 2, verse 6. He bring it down to the grave. He bring it down. Let my people go. Pharaoh, don't let them go. I'll kill your son. Because I must free my son. Whatever needs to go for you to fulfill God's agenda must go now. Must go now. Must go now. Must go now. In the name of Jesus. Well, be born again. Keep your faith alive. And then you are in charge. Do what God says to do. Then then you will check out of your, your life and check out of what belongs to you. When God blesses, no man can cross. So your life is healed. Finally, as we close, self-inflicted causes. This is where the caution is. Self-inflicted causes. So, when you see any man, any woman, any boy, any girl, blessed by God, keep your mouth. For I will bless them that bless thee, and him that causes you, I will cause. Don't move your tongue against the blessed, or you procure a cross on your life. Don't ever move your tongue against the blessed man, the blessed woman, the blessed boy, the blessed girl, or you inflict God's causes on your life. Self-inflicted cross. A lady shared a testimony here from Oyo. After what, you know, washing his mouth on the mission in my person, everything went haywire. God, what is happening? What is happening? What you said? Let not your mouth cut your flesh to sins. Let us say that before an angel was an error. Why should God be angry with you and destroy the works of your hand? A young man came in from somewhere and he said he was saying some things about uh, this and that. And then God gave him. Uh, what is it? What do you call it? Mouth or dog. You can't open your mouth. <laughs> it's like latrine. And the Lord told him where he got it from. So he ran down here. You are the testimony. He ran down here. Self inflicted as, as, as distorted many destinies. Many destinies. Since you don't know whom God has blessed, keep your mouth and keep your life. He that keepeth his mouth, keepeth his life. Keep your mouth, oh, I beg. Keep your mouth. That woman is a thief. How do you know? Keep your mouth. And God is the one that bless her. Keep your mouth. Now, what is your judgment? Who made you a referee? In case you say it's not God and it's God, you are in trouble. Self-inflicted causes. 
Is there anybody in this order to know that tithing is a requirement to be free from the cause of lack and want? But why won't you? Self-inflicted. Nothing else. He said, you are caused. He said, why are we caused? You robbed me. How? In tight? Eh? Bring out the title. And I will stop the cause. But he won't. But he's waiting for Papa to pray. Papa just pray. When Papa prays, things happen. That's when the prayer comes to the will of God. Papa can make prosperity happen without you being a giver. This small Papa can make any prosperity happen to anybody without being a giver. Even himself wants the prosperity if he stops giving. Beware of self-inflicted causes that makes God look like wicked. Beware. Beware. Beware of self-inflicted causes. It has caused so much damage, devastation, and destruction to many lives. Beware. Beware of mocking the move of God. Beware of mocking the move of God. Isaiah 28, verse 21 and 22. For the Lord shall rise again as in Manzerah, that as, and will be wrought as in the valley of Gibeon, that he may do his work, his strange work, and bring to pass his act, his great act, his strange act. Neither be ye mockers, let you bring yourself into bandage for a heart of the Lord of hosts. A great consumption will be determined upon the whole earth, on the head of mockers. Don't mock the move of God, you don't end up as mockeries. Don't mock the move of God, you don't end up as mockeries. Don't mock the move of God, you don't end up as mockeries. Elijah came out with that fresh mantle, and 42 children were mocking him. Go up, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Their parents have been telling them negative things about Elijah and Elisha. So they came out to manifest it. And she, he turned back and caused them. You know why God had? It was the will of God. God won't uh, never answer a prayer that's not according to his will. And two shubias came out of the wood and destroyed 42 of them. That's how deadly mocking the move of God can be. I did the only one. Uh, I'm going to do the, uh, 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 I'm going to win souls. What is your problem? Let's see what will happen. Well, let's hope you live to see it. Mm. Beware, my friend. Beware. Beware. <laughs> only those who celebrate the move of God become partakers of the blessings. Only those who celebrate the move of God become partakers of the blessings thereof. Only those who celebrate the move of God. Man, I celebrated all those folks ahead of us. Without them, I was going to ministry. I, my, my heart longs for the kind of grace upon their life. Certain because they are divers. Second Kings chapter 2, verse 23 to 24, they mocked Elijah, Elisha, and two sheep bears came out in response to the call of Elisha, because he called according to the will of God. You only want their cause. <laughs> that one cause for you to renew your work with God. Renew your work with God. Renew your work with God. Some fellows have made some amount available to us for massive transportation. Can I hear your Amen. amen. There are many more still coming on the way. So we are committed to bringing as many we pick by the roadside as possible to come and meet with Jesus. We give them relief through food and clothing and shelter. We give them rest through access to the world that brings, build their faith. We will bring them to rest. Food and money and all that, we, they are temporary. But life comes from the world. That launches me into rest. 
Uh, they spend so much money. What's your problem? Did they collect it from you? What's your problem? Just ask Jesus, how much is it so worth? When you meet him, ask him. Sir, how much is it so worth? He said, my son, wait a bit. If I tell you the world might be shaking. It's worth the soul of a sinless soul. So if all of us die now, it doesn't, it's not worth the redemption of any man. I'll tell you the cost. Praise God. We are going somewhere. I therefore pray for the discipline required to be free from self-inflicted causes. Receive that grace in the name of Jesus. Receive that grace in the name of Jesus. Receive that grace in the name of Jesus. The good news is the battle is over. Whatever causes have tied down your life, they are now released. Whatever causes have tied down in your life, they are now released. Lift up your right hand to heaven and give God thanks as we close. In Jesus' precious name, we have given thanks. Amen. Give the Lord a big hand of praise, everybody. Now, if you are here today and you want to escape from the horrors of the wickedness of the wicked and secure a place for yourself in eternity, Jesus is the only way. Accept me as your Lord and Savior is the only way out. Depending on your sin, it's the only way to, to receive for, forgiveness. So if you're here this morning, you'd like me to pray with you to be born again. Please stand to your feet. God bless you. Stand to your feet. I'll be praying for you right there where you are. Jesus saved my soul this morning. I want to escape today. I want my escape to be established today. Stand to your feet. I want my escape to be established today. Stand to your feet. I want my escape to be established today. Stand to your feet. Jesus. I want my escape to be established today. Stand to your feet. I want my escape to be established today. Stand to your feet. There are also people here that need to rededicate their life to Christ. Now, wait a minute. They that hasten after another God, their sorrow shall be multiplied. Come and say self-inflicted. Anybody running after idol, no matter how you run after God, it will make no meaning. You shall not have any other God beside me. Some people need to return this money because the touch of your life is in your pocket. The torment of your life is under your pillow. It's hanging somewhere in your house and your office. It's carrying you away. They say it will bring you, it's carrying them away. You need to return if you want to be restored. Somebody needs to say, Jesus, I'm returning back to you only. Wherever you are, stand to your feet, please. I want to pray with you. The dedication does not mean renewed activity. It means the position of your heart. The position of your heart. Please stand to your feet. Sir, you can't add anything to God. It won't work. It will never work. It has never worked. You can't add anything to God. <laughs> it has never worked and will never work. We are 43 years in this place today. Nothing has been added to God. You better wake up. God is not to blame if things still go wrong. For all of us who are standing and those who are whose conscience is pricking now, get up on your feet. My mama gave me. That's trouble. Baba gave me. That's not an intervention. Amen. No, 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 no. Jesus saved my soul. I want to escape. Now, all of us who are standing, bow your heads for prayers. Lift up your right hand to heaven. And pray this prayer of faith after me with all intentionality, all intent and purpose. Say after me, Lord Jesus, save my soul. Forgive me my sins. Wash me with your blood. It's my own choice today to welcome you into my heart. 
and set me free from the power of sin. Today, I believe you died for me. On the third day, you rose again to save my soul. Right now, I confess you as my Lord and my Savior. And I believe I am now saved. I'm restored back to the faith. I'm now a child of God. I've escaped from all the cause of life. Thank you, Jesus, for setting me free. Amen. Now be blessed in the name of Jesus. Amen. I cover each one of us with the blood of Jesus. They may cover against all satanic assaults in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Congratulations. 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 Please get seated. Quickly fill up those little slips given you and then expect a new dawn in all areas of your life. Just before the prophetic blessing, I will close. Next Sunday is Easter Sunday. <laughs> By divine instruction, it shall be our Easter miracle banquet. And just as Jesus showed himself alive with many infallible proofs to the apostles, he will do the same in our midst at this Easter miracle service. Acts chapter 1 verse 3. Among others, come expecting for an eye-opening miracle that will grant all of us access into realms of brighter revelation, bringing about a revolution, both in our spiritual life and in our endeavors in life. Come expecting a grave opening miracle that will shatter all choking situations in our lives. Jesus rose from the dead and the graves were opened and the dead of the saints came out from the grave. You are coming out. Amen. Everyone appointed to death will come out. Amen. Every seed of death will be destroyed. Come expecting breakthrough miracle that will bring an end to all leaders of struggles in our lives and many more. He came out of the grave. He said, children, have you any me? They said, nothing. Cast your net on the right side. And it was an amazing miracle. The fishes filled up the nest and yet the net was not broken. Come and expect the Infallible proof of Christ risen from the dead. It shall be an awesome experience in the name of Jesus Christ. From scriptures we understand that resurrection signifies the opening of the seal to the supernatural as our natural realm. It shall be a turning point in your life. You be in proper command of the supernatural. Furthermore, it shall be a special communion service because the first thing Jesus did when he rose from the dead was to serve the disciples' communion. And why? <laughs> to open our spiritual understanding into new levels. It shall be a miracle service indeed. So come ready for it. It's not just a ceremony. It's an encounter program in Jesus' name. Stand to your feet, everyone. Lift up your two hands. Whatever you notice that appears like a cause, walking contrary to your desires and to the word of God in your life, begin to reject it. Begin to reject it. Begin to reject it. Whatever represents the cause of man, the cause of devils, I've escaped. I'm born again. Yeah. 
the cause of poverty, sickness, and death is over. The cause of rebellion against God and his word is over. yourself on the bars of your neck, O oh, captive daughter of Zion. Shake your feet from the dust. You don't belong there. Depression is not your portion. Suicidal thought is not your portion. Fear is not your portion. Jesus, precious name, we are praying. Amen. Lift up those two hands. Now, I declare everyone on the sound of my voice around the world, cross free today. Amen. The effect of your freedom begins now. Every door that causes are closed against you, they are now declared open. <laughs> Every siege on your lining that keeps repeating the same thing over and over again, that siege is over. <laughs> Every cause behind your struggles in life. They are declared over. The cause of near success syndrome is finally broken. The cause of marital delay is broken. The cause of marital unrest is broken. The cause and spells of sickness and disease, they are broken. Yeah. And you are free. Yeah. I invoke the unction upon this commission that's ordained for the liberation of mankind from all of the devil to come upon your life right now. Yeah. Any devil or his agent that dares you from this moment goes down for you. Every arrow shot at you returns back to sender. Your destiny is released. Your eternity is secure. Lift up those hands and give God thanks. Shall we share the goodness of the Lord together in fellowship? Surely, God's goodness and mercy. We had earlier announced that to appear on Wednesday for distribution. Please do that for this week, and from next week we start on Saturdays. So you can be at the same time. God bless you. All that brought in things, be blessed. Amen. All that are collecting today, you'll be part of those giving tomorrow. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Fortune is my portion in 2024. Congratulations, amen and amen. Congratulate somebody as you go, be blessed as you do. If you came in after the worship offering, there are officials around the altar and various exits, carrying late offering tags, do well to drop your offering 
and be blessed as you do so. For all our new converts, don't forget to take the We Love You card you have been given to any of the new convert tents outside the major entrances to the tabernacle. And you drop the card right there to pick up the gift item waiting for you. The flyers for next Sunday, our Easter Miracle Banquet, are available. Officials, please give to each worshiper a copy as they are departing from the tabernacle. Be blessed in the name of Jesus. If you want to share your testimony in the second service, quickly rush to any one of the major entrances. Our pastors are waiting right there to document your testimonies. Be blessed. Choir.
those hands together for Jesus and make it bigger and bigger and please be seated. We are welcoming ourselves into service this morning from Psalms 124. Psalm 124, we shall be reading responsively. And verse 1, if it had not been the Lord who was on our side, now may Israel say, verse 2, if it had not been the Lord who was on our side, when men rose up against us, then they had swallowed us up quick when the wrath was kindled against us. Verse 4, then the waters had overwhelmed us. The stream had gone over our soul. Then the proud waters had gone over our soul. Verse 6, blessed be the Lord who had not given us as a prey to their tea. Our soul is escaped as a bird out of the snare of the fowlers. The snare is broken and we are escaped. And verse 8 together, our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. You are welcome. Celebrate Jesus. Shortly, we are going to be rising up to take our congregational hymn for this service. Standing on the promises of God and the choir will be leading us. my King, through eternal ages let its praises ring. Glory in the highest I will shout and sing, standing on the promises of God. Stand Is of God, my Savior, standing, standing. I am standing on the promises of God, standing on the promises that cannot fail when the holy songs of doubt and fear.
Please take your seat. Hallelujah. Kindly pay attention to the following faith tabernacle announcement for the second service. Number one, praise the Lord. To the glory of God, our corporate church outreach was a great success. With about 7,000 souls saved and several other thousands invited for service across our WSF areas as at the time of this report. Please give Jesus a big hand of praise. May everyone reach for Jesus, be established in the faith, and this church for life. And may everyone actively engaging in this season be openly rewarded in Jesus' name. Number two, good news. <laughs> to the glory of God, a number of kingdom promoters are out to see all converts and challenge members brought to church. Therefore, the church is in search of transporters for the massive harvest of souls that God has given to us in this season. We are admonished to provide necessary details at our various WSF area office on the church website by clicking on the transportation banner or using the transporters update link circulated on our various WSF platforms. Number three, covenant hour of prayer continues tomorrow, Monday to Saturday. Remember, this holds in over 600 locations across Lagos and Ota. Time, 5.30 to 6.30 a.m. Number four, praise the Lord. Our Believers Foundation Class BFC for all our new converts and new members holds tomorrow Monday. Note that this can either be live at any of our BFC centers across Lagos, Otter, and Environ, or online at the site displayed, the link displayed online on the screen. Details on the closest location to all our new converts and new members shall be sent via SMS time 6 to 7.30 p.m. Number five, praise the Lord. Midweek service hosts this coming Wednesday, both here in Kenalan and at all zonal fellowship centers in Lagos, Otter, and Environ. Remember, we shall be waiting on the Lord in a fast and break with the communal time, 6 p.m. Number six, praise the Lord. Easter Youth Alive Conference, IAC 2024. Comes up this week from Thursday 28th to Saturday 30th March 2024. 
the theme is renewal. All we shall be gathering, all we shall be gathered across our various clusters across Lagos. However, all areas in Ota will be gathered here in Kenya land. Youth are encouraged to prayerfully prepared and plan to attend. Follow all youth alive social media handles for details. Number seven, good news. <laughs> Yesterday, there was a massive response of members to the Kingdom Care Covenant as many brought non-perishable food items and clothing items to the central collection centers. To the glory of God, our distribution commences this coming Wednesday in over 200 distribution centers as part of our continuous commitment to the Kingdom Care Covenant. The central collection centers will be open to receive items from members every Saturday following lay down modalities. Number eight, praise the Lord. Be reminded that our employment portal is up and running with great responses. Visit the website displayed on the screen to register. Number nine, praise the Lord. Be reminded to share your testimonies of the mighty heart of God our testimonies at davidoedeko.com and testimonies at lfcww.org. Number 10, good news. Four intending couples wear this coming Saturday. Hallelujah. We are admonished to stand in the gap for them in prayers and share in their joy. Time 11 a.m. Good news. In this service this morning, it is testimony time. The following brethren, please come forward as you hear your name. Otep Bola Paras Darasimi. Otep Bola Darasimi. Please, if you hear your name quickly, step forward to share your testimony with God's people. Brother Solomon Champion. Brother Solomon Champion. Otep Bola Darasimi. Quickly step forward as you testify before God's people. And as we return back to the announcement to conclude it. Number 11. When our satellite fellowship, our house to house fellowship hosts this coming Saturday at our WSF centers across Lagos and Ota. Remember that we shall be praying for one another. Invite a neighbor to partake in this fellowship time. Time 5 to 6 p.m. For all our new converts and new members, please note that we do not collect offerings at our home cell meetings. This is without prejudice to those who pay for buses or pay the way of other members or convert to and through church. And finally, number 12, good news. Next Sunday, March 31st, 2024, shall be our special Easter miracle banquet. Hallelujah. And it shall also double as our special end of month Thanksgiving marriage and children dedication service. The resurrection power will be moving among us. Come expecting an encounter with the prophetic word. It shall be a service to be much remembered. Come along with your convert, invitees, and other loved ones for an encounter of a lifetime. There shall be three services. Times 6 a.m., 7.55 a.m., 9.50 a.m. Jesus is Lord. Put those hands again together for the King of Kings. Praise the Lord. In this second service, is testimony time. Put your hands together for Jesus is worthy. Kindly step up and share your testimony. Your name first, and then what the Lord has done. Our names are Otebola, Darasimi, and Chegun. We've come to give God the glory, the God of this commission. We married 2017, gave her to our first daughter 2018. And 2020, the devil struck and took her. At that time, we left winners already. 
So during that time, my husband prayed, and Papa appeared to him in dream and took his hand to the midst of those that are praying. Then we came back to Winners, and we started house fellowship in our house. 2021, I had her, and on Friday again, the devil came again and struck. She was sleeping in her dream. Uh, in, uh, during her sleep, we had her cry. We went there, and she was there, lifeless, jerking like this. Then we took the mysteries, anointing oil, every mysteries that we know. We administer anointing oil, everything on her. And my husband took her and said, God, this place, we do fellowship here. This place is an extension of Canaan land. Nothing dies in her hand again. After one hour, Oluwadara see me jerk back to life. And we give God all the glory. Celebrate God higher. Put your hands together. Please come quickly. Praise the Lord. My name is Solomon Champion. I want to thank God for divine healing. Um, last year, I was having this demonic headache and through 21 days prayer and fasting, it became a migraine. So I was thinking it's a normal stress. But later, I knew it was not ordinary. Every week, headache, severe one. So on the 18th of February, I was seated at Grace. I was having this migraine, so I went to the restroom to put water on my head. When I got back, I wanted to enter the church, and I told God, I said, this headache is not for me. And I told the migraine, if I enter into the service and you come out with me, then I will take it as my portion. But if not, then it's not my portion. So luckily for me, it was a mantle service. Immediately, I placed the mantle on my head. The headache came like three times more, but I came out for instant testimony. So when I got back home, I slept and I woke up. And from the 18th of February till now, I've never even felt tired or headache. And God has taken it for my lineage. The second one, the second one is God healed me of hepatitis B. So I, I usually donate blood four times every year. So I went 2020 to donate the third time for the year. And the lab scientist said, sorry, you can't donate. You have hepatitis. I said, no, it cannot happen. She said, it's there. I said, I know it's there, but it cannot happen. So I went back home believing God. As of that point, the only thing I was waiting for is, I was waiting for Papa on this order to say hepatitis B destroyed. But for, the, for two months, Papa didn't mention hepatitis. All diseases were mentioned. So after I got home, I was asking God, what is the problem? And I heard the just shall live by his faith. So after that time, I came back to church and Pastor David Jr. was ministering. And he said that most of you complain, instead of you to bring your strong reasons to God. So when I got back, I now check the meaning of hepatitis online for the first time. I didn't know. I now noticed that there is nothing I was doing as of that time that could have put hepatitis in me. I was clean. So I took my pen and I wrote 11 reasons and I picked two chairs. I said, Jesus, please sit down. I want to talk to you. Then I gave him 11 reasons why I can't have hepatitis B. So I went back to the hospital. The lab scientist said, Mr. Solomon, we've told you your case will decide by January what will happen to you. I said, no, run the test again. So after Shiloh, I never prayed about it. I didn't switch to kingdom advancement endeavors. Rather, I reminded God of my kingdom advancement endeavors. So when I went back on the 24th of December, 2020, everybody in the hospital started laughing. I met the owner. She said I should go and meet the lab scientist. And to God be the glory, she said in her years of experience, she has never seen it, that it was not just I was hit, it was cleared. She didn't believe it. She ran HIV tests and serious tests. And this is the result. I'm cleared and I'm Hallelujah. Celebrate God. He's faithful. You are the next on the line in the name of Jesus. For these wonderful acts of God, put your hands together again. He's worthy. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. This morning, it's my privilege to welcome a number of people who are here today worshiping God for the first time at the Faith Tabernacle on a Sunday like this. If today is your first time at the Faith Tabernacle on Sunday like this, wherever you are in your seated position, just lift your hand and wave it to Jesus so we can identify you. This is your first time you are here at the Faith Tabernacle on a Sunday. Just lift your hand and wave it to Jesus. God bless you. I welcome everybody. Give Jesus a big hand for these precious people that God has brought our way. Thank you, Lord. Please 
Just keep your hand lifted until our officials reach on to you. They will be giving you right now a welcome package. Along with it, you'll be given a card that you need to fill. Just make sure your hands are lifted until you receive your copy of both items. For those who may not be able to lift up their hands, those who are around them, please indicate on their behalf so they can be identified and given the necessary packages. I want to specially welcome you on behalf of Jesus Christ, who is the head of the Church Universal, and his servant, the apostle over this commission, Bishop David Oedipo. What is unique about this church? This church is ordained a house of liberation by divine mandate, where God stops the tears of men and women, old and young, boys and girls, where God terminates all oppressions of the devil and confers breakthroughs on all members as they believe. God has not ceased to confirm his word since this mandate was delivered over four decades ago. If you'll endeavor to abide in this church and commit to following every instruction that you receive here for the next three months, the Lord God will bless you openly as he did to Obedidom. I want to welcome you today on behalf uh, to this Breakthrough family, and may today be your entry into the realms of unstoppable breakthroughs that you've always longed for in the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody believes, say louder, amen. amen. Therefore, to all of our first-time worshipers, we say to you today, welcome home. Give Jesus a big hand of praise. He is worthy of all the glory. May I request right now for all our first-time worshipers to please rise for a word of prayer and blessing. All our first-time worshipers, please rise on your feet right now for a word of prayer and blessing. Now bow your heads as we pray. Our Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you this morning for these precious people. You have drawn them by your mighty hand. You brought them for a blessing. Therefore, by your authority today, we declare each one of them blessed in the name of Jesus. Whatever they have left behind as a concern to come to your presence today, let every such issue of concern be converted to an open testimony. You have brought them on this covenant of breaking generational causes. Let every age-long curse upon any one of their lives be shattered in the name of Jesus. Amen. Above all, for any one of them who is yet to know Jesus as Lord and Savior, we declare today for them as the day of their salvation. Thank you, mighty God. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Somebody believe, say loud, amen. amen. It is done. In Jesus' precious name. Please be comfortably seated. Now make sure you fill out your form and submit it to the official closest to you. You are blessed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Somebody believe, say louder, amen. amen. Please listen to this special Easter Sunday announcement. Praise God. Next Sunday is Easter Sunday. And it shall be our Easter miracle banquet. And hallelujah. And just as Jesus showed himself alive with many infallible proofs to the apostles, he will do the same in our midst at this Easter miracle banquet. Among others, come expecting an eye-opening miracle that will grant all of us access into realms of brighter revelations, bringing about a revolution both in our spiritual life and in our endeavors in life. A grave opening miracle that will shatter all choking situations in our lives. Breakthrough miracles that will bring an end to all areas of struggles in our lives and many more. From scriptures, we understand that resurrection signifies the opening of the seal to the, redemption, to the redeemed into the realms of the supernatural as our natural realm. Furthermore, there shall, be a, there shall be a special communion service because the first thing Jesus did when he rose from the grave was to serve his disciples, the communion, so as to open the eyes of their understanding that they might understand the scripture. Come prepared for an encounter with the resurrected Christ that will bring every one of us out of every form of grave in the name of Jesus Christ. Jesus is Lord. Give Jesus a big hand of praise. Good news, good news, good news, good news. 
Right now in this service, it is offering time. Can you say believe in amen to it? So, properly put together right now, all your worship seed, all your financial commitments, properly packaged and clearly labeled as we get set to worship the Almighty God. Remember the various acceptable forms of giving. If you are giving cash, make sure it's properly packaged in an envelope and clearly labeled. You can also give in check in favor of Faith Tabernacle Canaan Land. You can as well take advantage of any of our electronic giving platforms. If you check the screen, you'll find all the information you need there right now. Praise God. Our anchor scripture today shall be from Philippians chapter 4 and verse 19. The word of God is very clear about this. It says, but my God, say it, me, my God. Say it again, my God. My God shall supply all your need. All, all, not some, all. Say it, mean all. According to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Say it, me, I receive it. Please rise upon your feet and take your seed in your hand. Lift it up unto God. Thank him. My God, I thank you. You are my supplier. I thank you. I worship you today. I thank you. I stand today to fulfill the terms of the covenant of giving. I thank you. And I thank you because I can see all of my need being supplied by you. Take all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Please keep your seat lifted. Father, in the name of Jesus, we stand here today with financial seed in our hands to fulfill the terms of the covenant of abundance, let our seed be acceptable. Amen. To every giver, we see you as our source. Therefore, no more lack. Amen. No more financial tension. Amen. This seed opens greater doors of financial blessing. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Say louder and believe in amen. amen. Please, you may be seated comfortably. Cast your seed with joy. Willingly, as we welcome the Faith Tabernacle Choir.
Shall we lift up our two hands to heaven? Thank God for the freedom wrought by Christ on the cross. Give him thanks. Whosoever the Son of God shall, shall say free shall be free indeed. Thank him for the freedom wrought for us, wrought on our behalf. Ask him now to speak to you this morning, everyone. Jesus, I'm here to hear from you. Speak to me this morning. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen. Jesus, we are all gathered at your feet, waiting for your verdict. Waiting to experience the breaking of Jesus' causes. Waiting to experience our next level of freedom. Let it be, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. You say you shall know the truth. The truth shall make you free. The revelation of your word today secure our long-awaited freedom. Amen. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Praise God. Fortune is my portion in 2024. Congratulations. Give the Lord a big hand of praise. The outcome of causes is misfortune. And the year has been named as a year of fortune. It implies causes shall not survive in anyone's life this year. Behind all misfortunes are causes. And it's your year, my year of fortune. 
Therefore, the effect of every curse from every source working against anyone's destiny here shall be rendered known and void. Yeah. It's your year. Yeah. Your enemies will smell. Yeah. Your mockers will go into hiding. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. Serving God and the interest of his kingdom pays your matchable. We spent quite some time looking at that in the last three parts. And I want to believe that by most of us have been able to see that serving God is no fun. Serving God is a highly profitable endeavor that pays the unmatchable. In return. Him, they shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasure. Serving God pays the most. Serving God pays the unmatchable. One can't see the reality of those returns and still take serving God lightly. No one can see what benefits him and shies away from it. No one can see what adds value to him and ignore it. Can I have you say with me, open my eyes, Lord, that I may behold wondrous things available to me through serving you. Open my eyes to see. You can't see it and not dive into it. 48 years ago, I saw the tangibility, the reliability, the validity of Matthew 63. I've not needed any encouragement, neither can you discourage me. I just see you as doing your own thing while I keep doing my thing. You can't see the reality of what it offers and ignore it. Serving God is the most rewarding endeavor in the whole wide world. But it offers what no man, no skill, no strength, no certifications, no qualification can offer. If they obey and serve him, they shall spend their days in prosperity, their years in pleasure, in the world of up and down, consistency, <laughs> standard temperature and pressure, living as if the devil were dead, all their years in pleasure, not under pressure. Thou shalt serve the Lord. Your God and he shall bless your bread and your water. His blessings make rich and art no sorrow. And I will take sickness away from you, immunity. You shall not be barren or cast young in the land, covering. The number of your days I will fulfill. There's no way they offer that in the entire world. You can't see it and ignore it. We play with it because we have not seen it yet. I love what John said. The things we have heard, the things we have seen, the things our eyes have looked upon, and the things we have handled, they are the ones we are telling you about. Many stop at hearing we are yet to see. Many see, but not clearly. But they have not looked upon it well. You can't see clearly and not pursue it. You can't pursue it and not handle it. Awesome God. <laughs> 
when I saw Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18, I saw the tangibility. I saw the reliability. By God. I saw the validity. Yay! I can never be poor. I saw something before I could be saying that. No church preached that to me. Oh, no. I had it by seeking to know it. Lord, show me. And he did. And I couldn't pretend. It's not the problem of darkness. It's walking away from light that gives strength to darkness. And that light shines in darkness, and darkness communicates in love. When you step into walking in the light of God's world, darkness naturally clears the way for you. A new day. So serving God is no mere religious activity or hobby. Serving God is a big time business. Jesus said, don't you think I should be about to my father's business? Luke chapter 2 verse 49. And what business? It shall be called Jesus I shall take away the saints of his people. Matthew 1, 21. For this purpose of the Son of Man manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. 1 John 3, 8. And Jesus called the business. Now, John 18, 37. To this end was I born, for this cause came I to the world to give witness to the truth. And Jesus called it business. Big time business. With unmatchable returns. And many in this church are witnesses today. I see you come on board. Amen. May serving God become your delight from today. Amen. Now let's quickly look at platforms, avenues for serving God. Number one, please note that prayer is one of the aspects of kingdom advancement service. Hannah was serving God with prayer and fasting daily. Look to. So pray thy kingdom come, like Jesus taught us, is one of the platform of profitable stewardship. And anybody who can eat, like I humorally say, can pray. Anybody who can eat, can pray. They ask, what do you want? I, I want Tamala. You can say it. You can pray. What do you want? I want salad. As tough as this to call, you are able to call it. You can call on God. Prayer is a veritable platform for stewardship. You have not been able to go out. Can't you go up? I don't know how I feel when I go on the street. No, how do you feel when you're in your closet? No excuse. Now without excuse, oh man, who's how you be? Everybody has a part to play in driving kingdom advancement and divorce. Everybody has a part to play. You come into church, you pray for the church, pray for the service, that God will visit everyone that's coming into the service today, meet the needs of everyone. Lord, speak through our pastor, let the world flow with power. Lord, save every unsafe soul that appears in church. Lord, let all movement to church today be heat free. Then you are walking. Lord, touch the soul of this my neighbor. Cause him to escape as you cause me to escape. Save his soul, Jesus. He may even come and say, ah, why don't you even come to come to this church? Your prayer is answered. Your prayer is answered. Let's look at this four platform very quick. Now, praying for the flow of the word of eternal life in church that will establish new converts and members in the faith and in this church. John 6, 66 to 68, Jesus asked his disciples, would you also go away? And he said, whither shall we go from thee? For thou hast the word of eternal life. Verse 68. 
They came for bread. And Jesus said, I'm not giving you bread today. <laughs> Many of the disciples left. And he said to his disciples, will you also leave? He said, where shall we go? You have the word of eternal life. Nothing keeps a man in the faith like the word of eternal life that he has access to. So pray for the flow of the word of eternal life in every service. What else do we pray? Number two, pray for divine intervention for the needs of members to be met so they can be able to, they can abide in the faith for life. Lord, meet the need of that family. Lord, sort them out. Let this struggle come to an end. Let this up and down come to an end. Jesus, hear me today. And you are praying that as you pray for yourself. Paul said in Philippians 1.19, I know this shall turn to my salvation. I know that this shall turn to my salvation through your prayer and the supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ. So our prayer turns things. So we pray for the needs of members to be met. So you won't wander away to the enemy. Wander away to the camp of the wicked. Everybody has a part to play. We can serve God with effect on the prayer altar, knowing also that whatever good thing any man does, the same he shall receive from the Lord. Ephesians 6 8. As you are praying for others to be free, you are establishing your freedom the more. Number three, we are serving God is engagement in investing financially in kingdom promotion and divorce. Kingdom promotion and divorce. You hear the announcement now, we are sourcing buses from all over, the con uh, all over the city to move in the harvest. I mean, uh, people are giving. And then uh, from next Sunday, we'll let you know how you can be a part of that. No single worshiper will be left behind under any condition. They shall be brought in to learn at the feet of Jesus so they can have rest. They have relief through what we give them in terms of clothing, uh, food, but that's relief. But to find rest, he said, come on to me, all you that live on our heavy laden, come and learn of me, and shall find rest. We bring them to where they can land at the feet of Jesus, so they can find rest. Can I hear your amen? amen. First Chronicles 29 and verse 3, David said, now because I've set my affection to the house of my God, I have of my own proper good, of gold and silver, which I have given to the house of my God. True love gives. One can give without loving. You want to be recognized. You want to be applauded. But one can love without giving. God so love and God so give. If you so love, my friend, you will so give. You are not giving because you don't love. True love gives. True love gives. First John chapter 3, verse 15 to 18. 18 says, Let us therefore not love in word nor in tongue, but in truth and in deed. Your brother is in need. You say, Okay, you are okay. God bless you. So your fortune. Praise God. Every true lover is a giver. Every non-giver is not a true lover. Number four, stay committed to kingdom care covenant as a lifestyle. Galatians 6, 12, 6 2, he said, Bear ye one another's burden and so fulfill the law of Christ. That's the law of Christ. The law of Christ. Verse 10, he said, As we have opportunity, like we had this last Saturday, and God bless your soul, 
for all of your givings. Praise God. We also have the account out there um, where you sow your financial seed for kingdom care. And we can tell you with all sincerity, as we have done over the years, it will be used only for that. Nobody can touch kingdom care to do any other kingdom thing. It's for kingdom care. So when we need more rice, we take the seed to buy the rice. We need more beans, we take the seed to buy the beans. Kingdom care. And we're going to give you the account also for transportation uh, as we sort everything out. So you can also sow your transportation seed and we keep moving everybody because we are out on the street. Bring them out from the street. Give them clothes to wear. Carry them to church. Praise God. Amen. You know the interesting thing, sir? I've been doing it before I was a pastor. I've been doing it because I, if I was a pastor. So I'm not posing. I'm not trying to pretend or teach you what does church. No. Before I was a pastor, before I was called to ministry, I walked through that village, my son, where you came from, and I saw that town hall. I said, Lord, before I leave this place, let it be filled with people hearing your word. And then an evangelist came, he was going to do crusade, and they picked me to do interpretation for him. I thank God for it. And then one morning we were having a seminar. He said, Brother David, you take the seminar this morning. When I got up that stage, I remember my covenant as I passed through that place, and I wept. Who come? Who come? This is no game. This is no game. This is no game. You see a place, you say, what do they do at this town hall? I said, what do they do at this, this, this dance, dance, dance? I said, no. <laughs> and I, I said, before I leave here, I want this place filled with people here in your work. What is it that moves you when you get to a place? Eh? The church in your village is not built. You have land there, you won't give. <laughs> land, they didn't say build. You have land, you won't build. And even when you want to sell, you want to sell that it's not that the price. <laughs> That's less than what the sinners are selling. What kind of a man? <laughs> in your father's business? He said, Papa, enough. It's not enough. I have to tell you everything, I will help you. <laughs> Your delight in God and his war qualifies for his delight in you and your affairs. Get delighted, my friend. If I've been doing this crazy thing for 48 years and it's working, you better check it. You can't fake anything for too long. It has worked for people ahead of me. It's working for many people now in my time, working with many people after, you know, behind us. It's always working. It must work for you. Amen. It must work for you. Amen. Now, can I humble us? God is asking us to give you out of what he gave you. He's asking you to give out of what he gave you. So it's not, there is nothing you are doing that Apollo has not done. <laughs> As God has blessed every man, so let him give from what God blesses him. God asked for Isaac after giving Abraham Isaac, not before. It's not a taskmaster. So I, I gave 10,000. From where? From what God gave you? Praise God. <laughs> if your thought like give you money now, it's not from what you gave him. Yes. He said, Daddy, Daddy, I just love you. This is too naira. <laughs> and I said, thank you. For what? It's from what I gave you. <laughs> if you wait for thank you from God, you wait forever. He doesn't thank you to anybody. Have you seen anywhere in the Bible where God say thank you? Yes, sir. <laughs> Man can say thank you for social reasons. <laughs> to encourage your emotion. <laughs> God responds by blessing. Hallelujah. When you obey him, he blesses you. <laughs> you shall serve and he shall bless. Now he shall say thank you. What is thank you going to do for you? He shall bless. You won't run out of his blessings forever. Yeah. You will not run out of his blessings forever. You and your household will not run out of blessing forever. Amen. You believe that? Let me hear your loudest, amen. amen. So stay committed, that's the word. 
What do I do to qualify for the world? Number one, for my stewardship to qualify for the world, serve God as a privilege, not as a burden. God is not looking for who to use, he's looking for who to bless. It's a popular saying here. He's not looking for who to stress, he's looking for who to make whole. He's not looking for who to humiliate, but he's looking for who to humble. Your going out may begin with mockery today, it will end up with glory tomorrow. Can I hear your amen? amen. So let us therefore go outside the gate behind his reproach, so he can turn our reproach to honor. Serving God must never be seen as a burden. We have that written in Jeremiah 23, verse 36, and down the line. Don't say the burden of the Lord, the burden of the Lord, otherwise it won't become your burden. I'll turn my back on you. 33 to 40. And leave that at our own time. There are better hundred than we are. He just chose us by grace. We are chosen by grace to be where we are. Now, between here, sir, and being a drinking parlor, when you drink yourself to stupor, what do you choose? Amen. You get only one, one of your pair of shoes. The other one is missing. What do you choose? God forbid that anyone here is a drug addict. <laughs> Human being that chose to make himself mad, not that anybody really made him mad. But he dignified you. He saved your soul. He saved my soul. Come and give the Lord praise. Yeah. Amen. None of your children, nor children's children, will be lost. Yeah. You'll never cry or weep over any of them. Yeah. None shall be taken over by the devil. Two, we must serve God diligently to qualify for the world. It's a reward of them that diligently seek him. Many are too casual about things of God. He said, don't be sloppy in business, but fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. This just means give it a business-like approach. A business-like approach. Giving, give serving God a business-like approach. You're on duty, get on that duty spot on time. <laughs> There's a demand, a covenant you made with God, approach it as a business. Lord, I desire four souls between now and the end of June, established in the faith, so help me God. Then you give it a business-like approach. It's in the word of them that diligently seek him. No one makes any impact in the delivery of any task that he has a casual approach to. He takes a serious approach to secure a glorious result. He rewards the diligent, not the casual. Hebrews 11, verse 6. It's the reward of them that diligently seek him. We must serve God tirelessly. The reward is coming. It may not come at your time. It makes all things beautiful in his time. So stay occupied. He's coming. He never lies. Do a tireless wait for him. He's surely coming. Matthew 24, verse 45 and 46. The word said, Who then is a faithful, a wise and faithful servant? Matthew 24, 45 to 47. Whom his Lord will make ruler over his good to give them their meat in due season. Blessed is that servant, whom his Lord, when he cometh, whatever time he comes, shall find so doing. But I say unto you, he will make him ruler over all his goods. He <laughs> will make him ruler over all his goods. If he finds him so doing when he comes, when he comes, when he comes, he's not on a wall. If he finds him on duty, still panting after God, still doing the beatings of heaven, still doing the pleasure of God, 
He will make him ruler over us. He's coming. Do a tardy wait. There may not be fruit in the vine. Wait. Keep doing what you're doing rejoicingly. Wait. He will show up suddenly and make you feel like hands feet and get you upon your high places. Keep at it. That's the word. Keep pressing. No waiting, no parking. Keep moving. Serving God tirelessly is how to maximize the returns on our stewardship. Serving God tirelessly. Serving God tirelessly. One day, this humorous God jumped your church from 2.3 acres of property to 530. That's a jump, my friend. That's a jump. <laughs> that's a jump. My God, that's a jump. There will be many, many jumps this year. Because as you fill your crowd, your crowd, the rain to your next level will fall. Yeah. And next level is not one step after another, it's any step he chooses. 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 Now, the time when you mention one million, it's a million. It's, it's a heavy. You mention 10,000 at a time, it's heavy. But suddenly, 100,000 will not be heavy. And then suddenly, one million will not have weight. Suddenly, one billion will look light. Please follow through. 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 There was a time we had no microphone. And so the person recording will always follow me because I always move around, you know. That's my gift. <laughs> I move around. They carry the transitor uh, record uh, and follow me. <laughs> In those days, uh, video was scarce. You don't uh, talk about video. Okay, to video who? <laughs> my God. And now from that point, you are not broadcasting the entire world. Yes. Come on, relax. It's coming. If you find him so doing, many are so lost. So walk away. He didn't find them so doing. You find them so doing, so doing, so doing. Therefore, be steadfast. <laughs> Unmovable. Always abandon in the works of the Lord. Knowing that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. Hmm. It's the key to it. Some are just about hitting the next jackpot. I think I'm not. Satan says, you don't try. You try. Ah. In fact, I didn't think we tried to this point. <laughs> you are just about stepping there. I was in Akura years ago and I told them, I said, you know, the payday is 28, and somebody withdrew 25th. He has lost 24 days of labor. Right? Now, somebody miserably withdrew at, on the 27th, one day to the time. Me, Shema, Utoge. 28 was the payday. He left 27. So everything of value in my life, God put it there. I've not seen one man to say, if not for this man in my life, God is up to anything. Yes, Just follow him, sir. Follow him. All this, you know, no, you matter. You know, you know, it's a lie. Those who do know their God, they shall be strong and they shall do exploits. There is no help of any man compared with the help of God. When God steps in, it shows. God will step into your life. Yeah. Can I hear your loudest amen? Yeah. Can I hear your loudest amen? Yeah. Can man give you protection? No. Can he wake you up when you sleep? No. Can he keep you on the road? No. In the air? No. Please look straight. Returns on kingdom advancement and divorce include one. Express answers to prayers. I've chosen you. Go and bring forth fruit. Whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give it to you. I guarantee you. John 15, 16. 
guarantees divine exemption from the evil day. Evil times are closing in on this generation at a terrific speed. But there's an exemption agenda in God's heart. And that agenda pertains to those who serve him. Malachi 3, 17 and 18. And they shall be mine, says the Lord of hosts, in that day when I spare my jewels or I open the heavens, and I will distinguish them as a man is doing his own son that serves him, then shall you return. And this is between righteous and the wicked, between him that serveth God and him that serveth him not. For evil days are here. The days shall be born like an oven, and all the proud and all that do wickedly shall be stubble. Malachi 4 1. <laughs> but unto them that fear my name shall descend righteousness and arise with healings in, in his wings. They shall be growing up and going forth as calves out of their stores. Exemption in the evil day. <laughs> this evil day that have come on the world will not impart on you and your family. <laughs> Keep serving God, your exemption is secure. Keep serving God, your exemption is secure. Keep serving God, your exemption is sure. Number four, it secures access to our higher places. As we read in Habakkuk chapter 3, 2 to 4, and then 17 to 19. The ultimate of kingdom stewardship is our repositioning to the high place of life. Our repositioning to the high place of life. Jesus took upon himself the form of a servant and is lifted above all the heavens today. Serving God enthrones. Serving God changes people's levels, people's levels. And then the secures our establishment in the faith. John 15, 2, you bear fruit, I will keep you fit. So you can keep bearing more fruit. It keeps you on working with Jesus. And finally, it secures eternity with Christ. Serving God in truth and in deed secures eternity with Christ. The seventy return with joy. Say, even devils are subject to your name. Say, just not because of this, but because your names are written in the book of life. Jesus told those, his disciples, he said, wait a minute. By your subscription to my instructions and serving me as disciples, Eh? I will appoint to you 12 thrones in heaven. Don't abuse it. Stay true. It always changes people's positions. The greatest among us are the ones that serve the most. Luke 22, verse 25 to 27. And the ultimate is enthronement from the earth to the heavens, verse 28 to 30. So secure eternity by serving God in truth and in deed, we put you under his blessings that keeps you in his house forever, forever, forever. It's over. Yeah. Lift up your right hand and give God thanks. Give God thanks from the intents of your heart. Give him thanks, give him glory, give him praise. There's no one like our God. If you have seen anything, say, Jesus, thank you for showing me this. Service is not a burden, but a privilege of a lifetime. I give you glory and praise in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Covenant day of breakthrough or breaking generational causes. Generational causes are real. God visits the iniquities of people to the third and fourth generation. Generational causes are real. And everything contrary to God's agenda in our lives as believers can be traceable to some causes that we're not aware of. Crosses are invisible, but their impact are undeniable. They can't be seen, but you can't doubt their effect. Now, watch a minute. That, that, that my son and daughter that shared their testimony, their first daughter was stolen, taken away by the devil. He came for the second one they had. 
after that, the first one they had after that, that tonight and tonight. He said, look, this is an extension of Canaan land. This place, we are not a fellowship, who's here? <laughs> Nothing dies here. They apply the mysteries and shut down the devil. Causes are real. Somebody has vowed somewhere that you will never have a child that will leave. So they came for him. You see the, how that my granddaughter was walking? Satan, you are lost. I have won. This one child. <laughs> it was victory. Crosses are real. Some are legally under it without knowing it. They are set on fire around about. They can't tell where it's coming from. So our invisible God has capacity to deal with other all invisible causes. All. It's invisible as well invisible. Obatauri, Tanrishe, Oware. Invisible God, you are my miracle worker. You are worthy. I'm, at, I'm under the siege of invisible forces, and I invoke the invisible hand of God to shatter them. Can I hear you? Amen. amen. So behind miscarriages, miscarriages is the devil. There's a cause. In Proverbs 26, verse 2, he said, as the bird for wandering and the swallow for flying, so the cross costless shall not come. So every discomfort around a man's life, there is something behind the same. More often than not, there are causes. Involved by some angry people without your knowledge. But they are greeting you. Now, we don't know. I, I'm sure business are going well. Yes, you must go well. You are a winner. And behind the scene, the shooting arrows. Shh, 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 shh. Nobody should go there. Nobody should brand there. Shh. Whatever represents a cause on anyone's life, under this anointing, you are declared free. Very quickly, we run through five sources of curses identified in scriptures. Five. Number one is the cross of God. And we saw God release that cross in chapter three of Genesis in response to the disobedience of Adam and Eve. The curse of the law is also said to be in the house of the thief. Zechariah chapter 5, verse 4. What is the kill? Across board, the common denominator is salvation. There is no escape from any curse, temporal or generational, without first being saved. However, we saw God came down and say, hey, I'm lifting the cause on the platform of the covenant. You carry a cause of struggling for survival, where it's a covenant that can set you free from it. 
I'm the Lord that gave thee power to get wealth. I may establish my covenant as well as your fathers as it is this day. So we can destroy the causes by walking in the covenant, which implies obedience to God's word. The cause came through disobedience, so it can only be averted through obedience. Can I hear you? Amen. amen. What's the covenant? I have these provisions for you based on these conditions. If you meet these conditions, you have committed my integrity. Meet the conditions I've commit, you have committed my integrity. Meet the conditions and you have committed my integrity. We saw the return of Abraham to Eden. Look to Abraham, your father, that I bear thee. I call him alone and bless him. I want to tell you, wilderness to Eden, your death to the garden of the law. So we can return to that garden by walking in the steps of Abraham. Can I hear your amen? amen? The step of unreserved obedience. Whatever God says is final. Can I hear your amen? amen? Number two is the course of the law. The cross of the law. They are listed there in Deuteronomy 28 and verse 15 to 66. They can be subdivided to three main areas. Poverty, sickness, and death. All those heavy verses can be divided to those three class classifications. That was what Egan taught us, and that's the truth. Now, <laughs> so the cross of poverty, the cause of sickness, the cause of death. Among other things, cost Jesus is death on the cross. And now Christ has redeemed us from the cause of the law by being made the cause for us for his visiting. Cause is every man that hung it upon the tree. That depends on Abraham may come to us who are Gentiles so we can obtain the promise of the Spirit through faith. So the cause of the law is averted by redemption. 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 Until one is saved, he cannot be free from the cause of the law. But the redemption is our covering. Genesis, I mean, Gal Galatians 3, 13 and 14. And then, of course, number four is the cross of devils. I, I think it's number three. The cause of devils. The Bible recognizes enchantment and divinations. We have a whole lot of that listed in chapter 47 of Ezekiel. And then in Numbers 23, 23, surely there's no enchantment against Jacob, no divination against Israel, So the cause of devils, whom Satan has bound low these 18 years, there are causes of devils. Now, if you look at the cause of the law, obedience is required to walk out of it. <laughs> you look at the cause of the law, you need to obey the verdict of salvation to escape. But the cause of devils does not have, I mean, when you do the right thing, he hates you for it. Job was his target. Why? He was a perfect man. A man that feared God and eschewed evil. He's always hungry for the precious soul. He said to Simon, Satan desires to have you. Why, why Simon Peter? Why not Thomas? He hunts for the precious souls. The cause of devils. What's the way out? It has born of God overcomes the war. Be born again. Be born again. First John 5 4. Be born again. Number two, keep your faith alive. 
Resist him severely by faith, and he will flee from you. Resist devil by faith, not by mouth, not by noise, not by shouting, by faith. Keep your faith alive. Ephesians 6, 6, above what holding the seed of faith and quench all the fear and the dance of the devil. Keep your faith alive and burning. You silence every devil. You quench all devils. You quench all devils. Someone testified over there, the testimony in the first service, how a young man was asked by his father to flee from Ghana because of the idol in their family that kills everybody at 35. Hmm? So he fled to Nigeria and came to this church one time, gave his life to Christ, and sat in one spiritual week of emphasis. You better mind those services. Mind them, sir. Let me be burden to you. Not Sunday service, so midweek. And he said, I reported in his direction on the second day of that spiritual week of emphasis. And it, he knew it was, he said, it's you I'm talking to. He said, I, I knew it was me. Following day, the father called him. My son, my son, the idol has disappeared. Mm. To know where they couldn't find the idol. A word came in Nigeria, an idol disappeared. Every evil behind your life, I command them to disappear now. <laughs> Somebody went home for burial, and as he entered his father's compound, his leg began to swear. Swear. In a moment, they have to put them on the wheelchair. And oozing for water, water, water. Very offensive odor. Stomach blown. But I came to this city of refuge. Sir, this is a rescue house. I said, said any whatever devil watch you arrive here today has not about over your life. Hey. God told me in that vision, the hour has come to liberate the world from all oppression of the devil. Through the vision of the word of faith, and I'm sending you to undertake this. So it's no joke. <laughs> we entered into that nation of Liberia, and there was this notorious queen of Sheba. As we got to the hotel, it was unlucky that day. We went to the same hotel. As we arrived there, he stepped out and vanished unceremoniously. Hey, who doesn't know fire? From today, anyone that dares your life for evil will crash for your sake. The head of a cult in Ethiopia got under the arrest of the Holy Ghost. As they brought him to the office, he saw my picture. Please, 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 remove that picture. Remove that picture. My picture. They said, you know, he said, I know him. I've been coming to destroy our work here for the past many years. I don't know where they live. <laughs> you are in a house of rescue. Yes, Every mark of evil placed on your life to make life uncomfortable for you and your family, that goes back to sender. <laughs> Anyone marked for death under the sound of my voice, the enemy that put that mark takes your place. Yeah. The enemy that put that mark takes your place. Yeah. So is the cause of man. We have the cause of man. Balaam, to with Balak, to cause Israel. It did succeed? No, it crashed. Surely they shall gather together, but not by me. And when I gather together for, against you, they shall fall for your sins. The cause of man cannot stand when you are standing in the covenant. The cause of man cannot stand when you are standing in the covenant. Your standing in the covenant nullifies the cause of man in totality, nullifies the cause of man in totality. Standing in the covenant nullifies the cause of man in totality.
Balaam said, I have a commandment to bless, and he has blessed, and I cannot reverse it. God's blessings are not reversible by the wickedness of man. When God proclaims a blessing, no devil can eradicate it. No agent of the devil can thwart it. I cannot reverse it. I cannot reverse it. He has not found iniquity in Jacob. I cannot reverse it. So working the covenant nullifies the effect of the cause of man. And wait a minute. Anywhere you see God's blessing, please take over. For God said, I will bless them that bless thee, and him that causes you when I bless you, I will cause. I won't ask for permission, I will deal with him by myself. Beware. Beware. It's life where you Wherever you see the blessing upon a boy, a girl, a man, a woman, young and old, don't wash your mouth. Don't wash your mouth. For I will bless them that blesses you, and him that causes you, I will cause. He will carry it. Now, Goliath caused David in the name of his God. And David gave it back to him. Don't let the enemy or his agent have the final say. Don't let the enemy or his agent have the final say. <laughs> Don't let the enemy or his agent have, He said, no weapon formed against you shall prosper, but every tongue, that's human being, you shall condemn. So you stand to condemn. When you sense any unhealthy thing around you, I condemn you now in the name of Jesus. You sense a gang up of the wicked. Not that somebody is telling you story, you know, talk, talk in town. But you, you are a man of the spirit. You sense it. And then you condemn it. And God said, I will confirm it. God won't condemn you. He will only confirm what you condemn. God will not condemn them. You condemn them and God will confirm it. It's full of mercy. You condemn them, then you confirm it. You condemn them and you confirm it. You condemn them and you confirm it. There are stories I can't tell you here. So you won't miscarry. <laughs> but I can tell you, God defends his own people. Any day, any time, anywhere. God defends his own people. He will defend you. Amen. So it's your job to say, I condemn you. There was a time I overtook someone in those days in Nephi. I was rushing for a meeting, and we got to filling station. He stopped. He said, "You don't know me." She was a woman, I guess, one of those if a witches. <laughs> you never get to where you are going. I said, "Now listen. You have run the battle line. As I get there, you won't get there." So one of us will get there, the other one will be lost. <laughs> God is not that, uh, might, be no, might be no for what. It's a war. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. As I get there, you will hear. Yes. And I know I was getting there. Oh, yes. You don't stay clear from a ledger chair, it will crush you. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. You shall condemn. Don't leave man to condemn you. Don't let an angel of the devil have the final say. Everything David said happened. I come to you in the name of the Lord. Whose army you defy? Today I'll bring it on your head. Did he do it or not? <laughs> and carry it to town. Did he do it or not? Your Goliath must fall. Amen. Every of your Goliath must fall. Amen. Every Goliath harassing your life must fall. Amen. Now, finally, as we close, this one is very dangerous. Self-inflicted causes. 
What do I call it? Self-inflicted curses. The capital source is flagrant disobedience to God and his word. If you won't hearken to my voice and observe to do what I say, the following causes will come. Self-inflicted curses. Verse 15 of Psalm 28. Self-inflicted causes. Caution. 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 Many are the troublers of their own destiny. Nobody is. God says something, I don't think so. But it shall come to pass if thou shalt not hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and to do his commandments and his status, which I command thee this day as I'm saying, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. There won't be a way out. I just inside it. Self-inflicted causes. May the grace required to walk in the light of obedience to the world, so as to keep you under his blessings, become the portion of everyone today. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 14. Is Israel a servant? Is he a homeborn slave? Why is he spoiled? The young lions roared upon him and yelled, and they made his land waste. His cities are born without inhabitant. Also, the children of North and Tarpins have broken the crown of thy head. Hast thou not procured this unto thyself, in that thou hast forsaken the Lord thy God when he led thee by the way? This is the way to go. I don't believe that. This is what to do. I don't, I don't agree. He said, you procure it for yourself. You are the one who went and bought it. You bought trouble for yourself and brought it home. Following the world is the cheapest way out of self-inflicted causes. Walking in the life of obedience to the word of God is what keeps you going. Praise God. Praise God. Seek you for the kingdom of God and all this have been added to you. Well, I don't think so. I'm not Papa, you know. We have other things to do, man. Well done. Causing the blessed brings a man under causes. Genesis 12, 3, and I will bless him that blesses thee, and I will bless them that blesses thee, and they that cause thee, him that causes thee, I will cause. Be careful what to say. Some have run their life into trouble without knowing. Fire is burning all around them. They don't know where it's coming from. Be careful. Be careful. A woman was speaking some rubbish all the way in Oyo. And then I think God reacted. I think began to turn a wire for her. God, what's going on? He said, remember what you said. Get on the hand. Turn your back. Number three, mocking the move of God. You saw the way that man said to Elisha, even if God opened the window, eh, this shall this thing be. He said, what? Okay. You will see with your eyes, but your mouth will not touch. Second Kings, chapter 7, verse 1 and 2, and then verse 20. Beware of mocking the move of God. We're in very strange days. We're in very strange days. Don't enjoy your life. Elijah came forth from receiving that mantle and things were beginning to happen. And then some 42 children stood there mocking him. Oh boy, go up. Oh boy, go up. He turned and caused them in the name of the Lord and two wild beasts came from the woods and ate up 42 of them. You know why? Elijah commanded according to the will of God. God will not answer any prayer that's according to his will. So his will of God to silence everyone that mocks the move of the Spirit. His will of God to silence everyone that mocks the move of the Spirit. Beware not to mock the move of God. 
Are we the only church in town? What is your problem? Did they call you? Did they force you? Hey, okay, let's go for outreach. Let's go for outreach. Are you forced? I don't even know where we're going. You know, you know. And you know, Papa even said that what we're building is not the last building we're going to be. Okay, what, what do you want to build? You wait. Beware of mocking. Beware of mocking the move of God. Don't turn your life to mockery. Don't turn your life to mockery, sir. Suffer not your mouth to cause your flesh to sin. Don't say, before Nanija is, is an error. Why should God be angry with you and destroy the works of your hand? Self inflicted causes is behind the woes of many believers. Behind the woes of many believers. <laughs> I don't think that church is working the truth. Well done. When God catches you, it's between you and him. What is your problem? Who made you a referee? Face where you are going, my friends. Yes, Face where you are going. In those early days in Kaduna, I will tell them, if the church is not meeting your spiritual need, please relocate. Other pastors are very getting concerned. They say, please relocate. Because there is a risk. Relocate. It's a house of blessings. So what are you doing with courses? Don't need it. But as the Lord lives, for anyone who willingly returns back today before the time lapses, he will clear it off. Amen. There is no sin God cannot forgive. Yes, there is nothing he will forgive without a man repenting. So before the space of time is over, repent. So repent. Repent. A man was here, and an uncle visited him from uh, the village. And he saw a calendar, you know, almanac or whatever we had that time, and I was holding the microphone. He said, please turn, turn that, turn that, turn that, turn it back. He said, what's happening? He said, I see fire. I see fire on that. Yes. We are not playing here, sir. Yes, sir. We are not playing. <laughs> you see, we had a flyer fell down, and a voice is speaking in tongues from it. We are not playing here. They are the same things that characterize the end time church. He said, neither be ye mockers. Let your chains be made stronger. Isaiah 28 and verse 21 and 22. Stranger things are coming. I said, stranger things are coming. Yeah. <laughs> your sons and daughters will be commanding certain strange things in your lifetime. Yeah. Beware of mocking the move of God. Beware of mocking the move of God. May each one here that's under the siege of seven filled cause be set free today. Yes. Lift up your right hand as we close. Give God thanks. Give him praise. In Jesus' precious name, we are praying. Amen. Very quickly this morning, you are here and you are not born again yet. Everything we have said has its escape in Jesus. The escape is in your salvation and my salvation. When man is properly saved, he enjoys the grace of discipline not to see what should not be said. Not to joke with what is serious. He is still in the dungeon of darkness, so the enemy has no more power on him. It's now translated as the kingdom of darkness. Until one is saved, sir, no remedy. So if you are here this morning, you'd like me to pray with you to be born again and walk in the cross free realm of life. Jesus came to give us back what Adam lost. You were chased out to the garden of Eden. Jesus said, I've come that you may have life. I have it more abundant. He's our restorer. Nothing changes without him. Nothing changes without him. If you are in Christ, all things have passed away. All things have become new. 
Quickly right now, Jesus saved my soul. For how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation? So I can escape from the wrath of this wicked world. Wherever you are, stand to your feet. God bless you. I'm praying for you right there. Stand to your feet. Jesus saved my soul. It's our escape. It's your hour of escape. Remain standing, please. Remain standing, please. Remain standing. Now, there are also people that need to dedicate their life to Christ. They don't mind that person to stay with all his ways. They do not think he shall receive anything from God. The man that he stands after another God, his soul shall be multiplied. So, you can't, no double dealing with God. You are either there with him or you are not there. You are here this morning, you want to dedicate your life to Christ, please stand to your feet. You want to dedicate your life to Christ, stand to your feet. God bless you, God bless you, many more standing up. It's your turn for a change of story. Amen. Please bow your heads right now where you are for prayers. And lift up your right hand to heaven. And pray this prayer after me from the depth of your heart with your heads bowed. Say after me, Lord Jesus, save my soul. Forgive me my sins. Wash me with your blood. I believe you died for me. On the third day you rose again to set me free from the power of sin. Today, I accept you as my Lord and my Savior. And I believe my sins are now forgiven. I am now saved. I'm restored back to the faith. I'm now a child of God. Thank you, Jesus, for saving my soul. And I know I have finally escaped today from the wrath of the causes of life. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. Amen. Now be blessed in the name of Jesus. For all that pray this prayer, I cover you with the blood of Jesus. Remain covered against any satanic assault. Grace to run the race to the end, receive it right now in the name of Jesus Christ. So shall it be. Congratulations, congratulations, and congratulations. Amen. Please complete your forms, those little slips given to you, and pass them on to the church officials around with you. Secondly, they give you a little card, we love you card. Take that after this service to any of you. New Converse tents, they are positioned along the six major entrances of this church. And uh, you submit that, they give you some gifts from the church to be a blessing to you. Please uh, ensure you get that. Also, we have Believers Foundation class that holds on Mondays, 6 to 7.30 p.m. across several hundreds of locations across Lagos and Nota. We'll be able to reach you from your telephone number by SMS to let you know which is nearest to you. And then if your job schedule does not allow for that, please who come to the online option uh, with a sense of mission, the same grace will be transmitted to you in Jesus' name. Shall we all rise? Now, by the unction of the Liberation Commission, I decree your liberty from all causes. May your repentance from what you know might be behind the challenge of your life bring about a new beginning. Yeah. I decree your freedom henceforth from self-inflicted causes. Yeah. The cause of man shall not hold a sway over your life anymore. Yeah. I curse every curse of devils on your life. You have escaped. You have escaped. Because you are now children of God, the cross of the law is broken. So you are free. Grace to remain free, receive it. 
Grace will remain free, receive it. Grace will keep working the covenant, receive it. Grace will keep obeying God's word, receive it. And Jesus saw the travail of the soul of Christ and was satisfied. So he lifted the cross in the garden as he saw the travail of Jesus on the cross. So the cross of God from the beginning is lifted. It's lifted. It's lifted. You will not eat your bread in sorrow. You will not give back to children in sorrow. The earth will eat good food for you. Not thorns and thistles. In the name of Jesus. Now may your commitment to Jesus in serving his interest be openly rewarded. In Jesus' name. Next Sunday is Easter. Why seek ye the living among the dead? You shall not be found among the dead anymore. You shall not be found among the failures anymore. You shall not be found among the paupers anymore. You shall not be found in any negative place anymore. Please, please, I've never seen God set a stage for Easter in my life till now than this one. I was in his presence. I wasn't even going through that for that moment. He just came down and visited me. He said, tell them I'm coming down with infallible proofs. I'm coming down with infallible proofs. I'm coming down with proofs that cannot be doubted. I'm coming down to show myself. He will show himself alive with many infallible proofs in the name of Jesus. Together, let's share the goodness of the Lord. Praise God. Fortune is my portion in 2024. Congratulations. Amen and amen. Congratulate somebody as you go. Be blessed as you do. If you came in after the worship offering was received, there are officials around the altar and various exits. Carrying late offering tags, do well to drop your offering and be blessed. All our new converts, don't forget to stop at the new convert tent outside the major entrances to the tabernacle. You will drop the We Love You card there and pick up the gift item that is waiting for you. And finally, if you want to share your testimony in the third service, quickly rush to any of the major entrances to the tabernacle. Our pastors are waiting there to document your testimonies. Be blessed in the name of Jesus Christ. Choir.
Someone excited to be in church this morning. Give Jesus the biggest clap you can this morning. Hallelujah. Please, you may be comfortably seated. This covenant day of breaking generational curses service, our call to worship, shall be taken from the book of Psalms 124. Psalms 124, we shall be reading responsively. Verse 1. If it had not been the Lord who was on our side... Now may Israel say, verse 2, if it had not been the Lord who was on our side when men rose up against us, then they had swallowed us up quick when their wrath was kindled against us. Verse 4, then the waters had overwhelmed us, the stream had gone over our soul. Then the proud waters had gone over our soul. Verse 6, Blessed be the Lord, who had not given us as a prey to their teeth. Our soul is escaped as a bed out of the snare of the fowlers. The snare is broken, and we are escaped. Together, verse 8, loud and clear, our help is in the name of the Lord, who made the heaven and the earth. Amen. You are welcome. Give Jesus a big, big, big hand. In this third service, it is time for a congressional hymn. Titled, Standing on the Promises of God. Shall we rise, please, as the choir leads? Shall we rise as the choir leads? Give me 
eternally by love strong God overcoming daily with the Spirit's Lord standing on the promises of God standing 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 on the promises of God my Savior Put your hands together for the Lord. Praise the Lord. Please let's listen to the faith tabernacle announcement for this service. Number one, praise the Lord. To the glory of God, our corporate church outreach was a, gr a great success with about 7,000 souls saved and several other thousands invited for service across our WSF area as at the time of this report. May everyone reach for Jesus, be established in the faith and in this church for life. And may everyone actively engaging in this season be openly rewarded in Jesus' name. Number two, good news. <laughs> to the glory of God, a number of kingdom promoters are out to see all converts and challenge members brought to church. Therefore, the church is in search of transporters for the massive harvest of souls that God has given to us in this season. We are admonished to provide necessary details at our various WSF area offices on the church website by clicking on the transportation banner or using the transporters update link circulated on the various WSF platforms. Number three, covenant our prayers continues tomorrow, Monday to Saturday. Remember this holds in over 600 locations across Lagos and Ota. The time is 5.30 to 6.30 a.m. Number four, praise the Lord. Our Believers Foundation class BFC for all our new converts and new members holds tomorrow Monday. Note that this can either be live at any of our BFC centers across Lagos or Tanevarons or online on the link shown. Details on the closest location to all our new converts and new members shall be sent via SMS. The time is 6 to 7.30 p.m. Number five, praise the Lord. Midway Communion Service hold this coming Wednesday both here in Kenalan and at all zonal fellowship centers in Lagos or Tanevarons. Remember, we shall be waiting on the Lord in a fast and break with the communion. And the time is 6 p.m. Number six, praise the Lord. Easter Youth Alive Conference, AYAC 2024. This comes up this week from Thursday the 28th to Saturday the 30th March 2024. The theme is Renewal. All youth shall be gathered across our various clusters across Lagos. However, all areas in Ota will be gathered here in Kenaland. Youths are encouraged to prayerfully prepare and plan to attend. Follow all youth alive social media handles for details. Number seven, good news. 
Yesterday, there was a massive response of members to the Kingdom Care Covenant as many brought non-perishable food items and clothing items to the central collection centers. To the glory of God, our distribution commences this coming Wednesday in over 200 distribution centers. As part of our continuous commitment to Kingdom Care Covenant, the central collection centers will be open to receive items from members every Saturday following laying down modalities. Number eight, praise the Lord. Be reminded that our employment portal is up and running with great responses. Visit the link shown on the screen to register. Number nine, praise the Lord. Be reminded to share your testimonies of the mighty acts of God at the two links shown on the screen. Number 10, good news. Four intending couples were this coming Saturday. We are admonished to stand in the gap for them in prayers and share in their joy. The time is 11 a.m. Number 11, Winner Satellite Fellowship, our house to house fellowship, holds this coming Saturday at our WSF centers across Lagos and Ota. Remember that we shall be praying for one another. Invite a neighbor to partake in this fellowship time. Time is 5 to 6 p.m. For all our new com converts and new members, please note that we do not collect offerings at our home cell meetings. This is without prejudice to those who pay for buses or pay the way of other members or converts to and from church. In this service, it is testimony time. Please let Brother Omega Teko, Omega Teko come forward and share his testimony. Let's go back to the announcement as we conclude. Number 12, praise the Lord. Special healing miracle service hosts today at the Faith Tabernacle Kenalan. There is nothing too hard for the Lord. Therefore, expect every affliction and oppression to be terminated today. The time is 11.45 a.m. And finally, number 13, good news. Next Sunday, March 31st, 2024, shall be our special Easter miracle banquet. And it shall also double as our special end of month Thanksgiving marriage and children dedication service. The resurrection power will be moving amongst us. Come expecting an encounter with the prophetic word. It shall be a service to be much remembered. Come along with your converts, invitees, and other loved ones for an encounter of a lifetime. There shall be three services and the times 6 a.m., 7.55 a.m., and 9.50 a.m. Jesus is Lord. Put your blessed hands together for Jesus. It is testimony time. Please quickly come forward and share your testimony beginning with your name. Praise the Lord. My name is Teko Omega. I joined this commission 10th of September 2010. I am here to return all the glory to God for healing me and rescuing my life from an accident. 2024, 19th January this year, I had a motorbike accident. I was lifeless for eight hours. The first hospital rejected me. Second hospital rejected me. I was admitted on the third hospital lifeless for eight hours. Prior to that time, I was praying kingdom advancement prayers, and I was paying the transport seed. And the brethren around me were interceding and say, God, this one must come back to life. During my unconscious hours, Papa's voice echoed to me, and he said, why would you want to pay so much for what Jesus has paid for free? So I echoed back and I said, there won't be any need for surgery. I won't lose my life. Jesus has healed me for free. Instantly, I regained consciousness. I came back to life. And the doctors were insisting that I needed a scan. The scan showed that I had eight fractures on my skull and I had a bleeding on the right side of my brain. I told them there won't be any need for surgery. Jesus has healed me for free. From the day I was admitted till the day I was discharged, I was only on paracetamol and diclofenac. Jesus really indeed healed me for free, and I'm here to return all the glory to God. Put your hand together for Jesus, brought back to life by that prophetic appearance. Uh, now let's listen to this documented testimony. Over 50 years of marital spell broken. 
My elder sister invited me to this commission some years back because we were trusting God for marital breakthrough in my family. When my elder sister was 10 years old, a man came to ask for a hand in marriage. At first, my father thought it was a joke. But four years later, the man came again and asked for a hand in marriage. My father reviewed his proposal and said, my sister would like to go to school. Eventually, the man left after placing a curse on my family. But I did not know until some years back. When my sisters were due for marriage, no sitter ever came to marry them. I came to this altar with my elder sister to pray. Today, over 50 years of marital spell has been broken. <laughs> Celebrate Jesus. I did my traditional marriage, court marriage, and white wedding in the month of March. I was the first in my family to do that. I give God the glory for breaking this curse in my family. I know that my remaining sisters will also be married. To God be all the glory. Testifier, eternal day end. Put your hand together for Jesus. For I know today you are going back with your own testimony. One more time for the testimonies. Let's give Jesus a big hand of praise. Today, it is my privilege to welcome some special people into the service. If today is your first time worshiping here at the Faith Tabernacle, may I ask that you lift your hand and wave to Jesus where you are seated. Lift your hand and let everyone around Give Jesus a big hand of praise for these precious people that he has brought into his presence today. Amen. Please keep your hand lifted, a welcome package, along with a card to fill will be put in your hand. And as soon as you collect yours, please put down your hand. A welcome package will be given to you. Ensure you receive your copies before you put down your hands. And in case you are not able to lift your hand, Please let those around them who can identify them, help them collect the package for them. I want to specially welcome you on the behalf of Jesus Christ, the head of the church universal, and the servant, the apostle over this commission, Bishop David Oyedepo. What is unique about this church? This church is ordained by God as a center of signs and wonders by divine mandate where God turns impossible cases into open miracles. We continuously see God changing the story of men and women, old and young boys and girls, as they engage with the truth of the world as taught upon this mountain. For over four decades, God has continued to confirm his word in this church, thereby making every member a wonder to many as they believe. If you will endeavor to abide in this church and commit to following every word from the altar as you receive for the next three months, the Lord God will bless you openly as he did to obey Adam. Amen. I want to welcome you today to this home of signs and wonders. And may today's encounter usher you into the realms of ear tingling testimonies that you have always longed for in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Therefore, to all our first-time worshipers, we say, welcome home. Church, let's give Jesus a big hand of praise. May I please request that all our first-time worshipers rise to your faith for a word of prayer and blessing. Please, all first-time worshipers, rise to your feet for a word of prayer and blessing. Please bow your heads as we pray. Our Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for all of these precious people that you have brought into your presence this morning. We know you have, blessed, you have brought them to bless them. Therefore, Lord, let all of them be blessed today in the name of Jesus Christ. And Lord, whatever 
concern any of these ones might have left a home before coming to church today, we are asking that at their return, let all those concerns be turned to a testimony for them in the name of Jesus. In this covenant day of breaking generational curse, let every curse that I might operated in their lives before this day be broken in the name of Jesus Christ. And Father, should any one of them have not met with you, Jesus, let this be the day of their salvation in the name of Jesus Christ. And cause each and every one of them to return blessed in Jesus' precious name. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Please be seated. Remember to complete the filling of your form and submit them to the officials close to where you are seated. Once again, you are welcome. God bless you. Somebody shout a lot. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Right now in this service today, it's offering time. So shall it be for us all in Jesus' name. Please properly package all your financial seed that you have brought to church today to worship God with. That includes your tithe, 10% of God's increases upon your life, your worship seed, and every other kind of seed you have purposed and you have brought to the house of God this day. Please be reminded of the various acceptable forms of giving. You can give in cash properly packaged in an envelope and label. You can also give by writing check in favor of Faith Tabernacle Canaan Land. You can as well take advantage of any of our electronic giving platforms. Please look at the screen and you'll find all the information you require concerning that right now. Praise God. As we give today, let's read from the Word of God from 2 Corinthians chapter 8 and verse 12. God's Word tells us very clearly, If there be first a willing mind, it is accepted according to that a man hath, and not according to that he hath not. A willing mind. To everyone giving today, as we give willingly, our seed shall be accepted. Can I hear louder? Amen. Amen. Please rise upon your feet, therefore, take your seed in your hand, willingly, lift it up unto God, and let God know you are giving willingly. Thank him for putting seed in your hand. Thank him for giving you the grace to give and to give willingly. To the God who is never in name, glorify his name, worship his majesty. Father, we thank you. We give you praise and glory in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Please keep your seat lifted. Father, in accordance with your word, we have come with seed in our hands today and we give it willingly. Let our seed be acceptable. For every giver today, let every form of financial tension be terminated. Let every form of financial misfortune come to an end. Yeah. So that these hands shall never beg again. Yeah. This hand shall never lack again. Yeah. And this hand shall remain giving hands. Yeah. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Yeah. Loud and believing, amen. Yeah. Please, you may be seated. As you cast your seed, do it willingly and with joy as the faith tabernacle choir ministers. Yeah. 
Lord, you promised if I keep my mind on you, you keep me in perfect peace. I know you will. You keep me in perfect peace. Oh, I, with the sincere heart, if I call upon your name, you never turn away from me. I know you will. You never turn away from me. You said you did.
you, Jesus. Lift your hand to heaven, everybody, and let's give glory to God from the depth of our hearts for the privilege, the honor, the opportunity that we have to be in his presence. Lord, we give you the praise, the glory, the honor, the adoration. We celebrate your faithfulness. You are worthy of all the praise. You are worthy of all the glory. You are worthy of all the honor. You are worthy of all the adoration. Father, thank you. Father, thank you. Father, thank you. Blessed be your name. Now let's begin to ask him to speak to each one of us today. Lord, I've come to this mountain for your word. Let your word come forth with power, transforming me, changing me, setting me free. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, thank you. And blessed be your name. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Lord Jesus, we have come before you this morning full of gratitude, appreciating and glorifying you for the privilege and the honor that you have given us to be in your presence. Today, our eyes are upon you. By your word, let every one of our lives be changed. You have called this our covenant day of breaking generational causes. Let every age-long cause every cycle of evil and misfortune be brought to a permanent end today. Yeah. We thank you because we know you have done it already. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Yeah. Somebody believe, say loud, amen. Yeah. Give Jesus a big hand of praise and please, you may be seated in his presence. Praise God, fortune is my portion in 2024. Congratulations, amen and amen. A line of teaching for our Sunday services this month has been serving God and the interest of his kingdom pays the unmatchable. Serving God and the interest of his kingdom pays the unmatchable. And by way of introduction, we have discovered that serving God is not just a mere religious activity or hobby, but it's a big time business. And Jesus referred to it as such. Luke chapter 2 verse 49, he said, Do you not know I must be about my father's business? Romans 12 verse 11, Not slothful in business, but fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. So serving God is referred to as business. And that means that it carries high level profiting for everyone that engages in it acceptably. Now the question we are going to begin by trying to address this morning is what are some of the platforms of kingdom advancement stewardship? What are some of the opportunities that are available to you and me to serve God in advancing his kingdom? We'll look at four of them quickly this morning before we move on. Number one is praying for the flow of the word of eternal life that will establish new converts and members in the faith and in the church. Praying for the flow of the word of eternal life. Praying for the flow of the word of eternal life that will establish new converts and members in the faith and in the church. It's important to recognize that according to scriptures, the instrument for establishment in our kingdom walk is the word of God. The Bible tells us in the book of John chapter 6, and verse 68, Peter responding to Jesus said, Lord, to whom shall we go? For thou hast the words of eternal life. The word of eternal life establishes us in the faith eternally. And we must understand that access to the word is created through the platform of prayer. The Bible tells us in the book of Acts chapter 6 and verse 4, they said we'll give ourselves continually to prayer. Acts chapter 6 and verse 4. We will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. What was the effect of it? Verse 7, the Bible says, And the word of God increased and multiplied, and the number of disciples were multiplied in Jerusalem greatly, and a great company of the priests were obedient to the faith. So the altar of prayer is where we instigate the release of the word of eternal life. 
And this is why the scripture admonishes us in 2 Thessalonians chapter 3 and verse 1. It said, brethren, pray for us. Brethren, pray for us. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3 and verse 1. Brethren, pray for us that the word of the Lord may have free cause and be glorified even as it is with you. So for the word of God to have free cause and to have maximum effect, we must engage the altar of prayer. That means that every one of us has a duty to invest maximally in prayer before any service. In the book of Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 19 and 20, here is what the Bible tells us, Ephesians 6 verse 19 and 20. It says, and for me that bold utterance may be given unto me that I may open up my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel. He said in verse 20, for which I am an ambassador in bonds, that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. Pray for me that utterance may be given unto me. So every time we have a service, there is a responsibility upon every one of us to stand on the altar of prayer in order to have the word of eternal life going forth for the establishment of souls. My prayer is that for each one of us today, as we continue to engage in this, every blessing and reward that answers for it will begin to answer on our behalf in the name of Jesus. Somebody believe it, say loud, amen. amen. Number two is praying for supernatural intervention for the needs of members to be met. Praying for supernatural intervention for the needs of members to be met. And this is so that they can be established in the faith and in the church for life. Praying for supernatural intervention. Please understand this. The matters of believers are not for discussion, but for intercession. We are not to go around discussing and gossiping on the matters that concern other believers. Our responsibility is to stand on the altar of prayer to intercede on their behalf. Every believer has an intercessory responsibility. This is so important and so vital. We have an intercessory responsibility. Paul the Apostle speaking in Colossians 1 and verse 3. Colossians chapter 1 and verse 3. He put it this way. He said, we give thanks to God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ praying always for you. That is the responsibility of every believer. Praying always for you. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 18. The Bible tells us there, it says, praying all prayers and supplication. Ephesians 6, 18. Praying all prayers and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for the saints. Now, the word supplication refers to an emotional and personal approach in prayer. You are, pray you are taking somebody else's matter like it is your own. And you are standing on the altar of prayer. And it says that we are to engage supplication for all the saints. So everyone that we come across that has one issue or the other that requires divine intervention, we are to stand on the altar of intercession, supplicating on their behalf until we see their miracles delivered. Shout hallelujah. I say shout hallelujah. This is so important. So we must come to recognize that we have that responsibility. A number of years ago, I remember the Spirit of God gave me a very clear instruction. He said, whatever you see that you can do nothing about, pray about. If you can't do anything about it, then it means it will take God to do something about it. Don't talk about it, pray about it. Engage the altar of prayer. Don't go around announcing it. Go around praying about it. Engage the altar of prayer. Shout hallelujah. I pray again today that God will grant each one of us grace for this. Number three is engagement in investing financially into kingdom promotion endeavors. Engagement in investing financially into kingdom promotion endeavors. The kingdom of God provides for us opportunities to invest financially 
in advancing the cause of the kingdom. We have just heard during the announcement that a number of people are already right now driving towards saying that transportation is provided for the people of God. We don't watch opportunities pass us by. We take advantage of them. Every time you see a kingdom opportunity, it is a destiny opportunity, a destiny advancement opportunity. We can dive into it, take advantage of it. That is how we position ourselves for supernatural dimension of blessings. Shout hallelujah. I say shout hallelujah. So we engage in investing financially in kingdom promotion and divorce. The Bible tells us in the book of First Chronicles chapter 29 and verse 3 concerning David. He said, moreover, because I have set my affection upon the house of my God, he said, I have of my own proper good bring, brought out gold and silver to the house of my God over and above all that I have prepared. I have brought out gold, I have brought out silver for the house of my God. And let's take note of this. Whatever you and I are giving to God or giving to his cause is out of what he has given to us. First Chronicles chapter 29 and verse 14. Look at what David said here. This is a perspective that will help us. He said, but who am I and what is my people that we should be able to offer so willingly after this sort? For all things come of thee. And of thine own have we given unto thee. All things come of thee. Every single one thing that we have in our hands, we have no right to pose with because it has come from God. If you notice, there is no individual that is born on the earth that is not born naked and empty. Everyone that arrives on the earth arrives naked, arrives with nothing in his hand. You have never seen any child born that came to the earth fully dressed and with a first band check in his hand. He comes, his hands are empty. He comes, he is naked. Why? He came with nothing into the world. That is an announcement that anything he got, he met here because God gave it to him. Please hear this and hear it very well. The moment we have the right perspective, it will affect our approach. So many people have their hand, their hands lifted up. Oh, you know, yeah, I'm, I'm giving to this, I'm giving to that. You are giving out of what was given to you. So come down to oppose to the one who gave you. Will put what he has given you a threat. It can be taken out of your hands. Is somebody getting what God is saying? So every opportunity to advance the cause of the kingdom with the resources God has put in your hand, we must see it as a privilege. We must do it with excitement because all that we have has come directly from him. There is nothing that we have that he did not give us. That's why David said, who am I? And who is my father's house? Who are my people that we should be able to give so liberally and after this sort? Because all things have come from you. And of your own have we given back unto you. Anything you are giving to God, he gave to you first. You can't give what he has not given you. The Bible says, let every man give according to the blessing of the Lord that is upon him. So it is the blessing of God that comes upon our lives and causes us to have that which we can offer willingly unto the Lord. So we must do so with delight and with excitement. Shout hallelujah. Number four is we must stay committed to kin the kingdom care covenant as a lifestyle. Stay committed to the kingdom care covenant as a lifestyle. In the book of Galatians 6 and verse 2, the Bible says that we are to bear one another's burdens and in so doing, we fulfill the law of Christ. That is, we are to take the matters of others that God has engraced us to be able to handle and we are to take those responsibilities on their behalf. That's why we have something like the Kingdom Care Covenant where we have the opportunity to feed the hungry, to clothe those who are not properly clothed, to assist those who need to be put in school, engaging, using our resources for the blessing of humanity, particularly those in the household of faith. Galatians 6 and verse 10. 
The Bible says that we are to do good to all men, especially those who are of the household of faith. Who are of the household of faith. So don't say, oh, pastor has already said that we are to intercede. So you start praying. Somebody is not eating. You are praying in the name of Jesus, you will not be hungry. No, the answer to that is not in praying for him. It is in providing what is available for his stomach to be filled. Shout hallelujah. This is so important. So we must take responsibility. We must take responsibility and see it as a kingdom opportunity. No matter where you are now, our current level is somebody else's prayer point. So let us seek opportunities to be a blessing. To be a blessing. Shout hallelujah. I say shout hallelujah. You have clothes, you gather them and make it available to those who need them. You have shoes, you gather them, you make them available to those who need them. Your children have grown up, stop storing their clothes. It will not fit your grandchildren. You distribute them out. Some people have all kinds of mindset. Oh, this cloth, I won't give it out. I won't give it out. I won't give it out. It will go out of style. Give it out. Give it out. If you look at your pictures 20 years ago, 30 years ago, those clothes, if those clothes are still available, you will not wear them because they will not look normal. Everything has changed now. So give it out now. Stop storing it for the future. You said this one, maybe 10 years later, this time will come back again. No. Give it to somebody who requires it. Is somebody getting what God is saying? We must stay committed. And hear this, it is not what you do once and for all. It's what you do as a lifestyle. Hebrews chapter 6 verse 10. Look at what the Bible says to us. It said, God is not unrighteous to forget your labor of love, which you have showed towards his name, in that you have ministered to the saints in the past, and you are still ministering to them now. That is consistency and continuity in our stewardship opportunities, particularly as it concerns this. Engaging consistently and continuously. Shout hallelujah. I say shout hallelujah. So you stay committed to the kingdom care covenant. Now what do you do for your stewardship to be qualified for returns? What do you do? for your stewardship to be qualified for returns. Number one, we must serve God as a privilege and not as a burden. We must serve God as a privilege and not as a burden. Don't take serving God as a burden. See it as an honor, as a privilege that you are being selected out of many to serve him. You look at your life and you go out today ministering to people all around and you look at many of them, ask yourself, why are you not them? And why are they not you? Why are you not lost? And why are they not the ones found? We must come to recognize that our opportunity to serve God is a privilege. It should never be seen as a burden. When God selects you, he selects you to your advantage. So you and I must continuously see it as a privilege and not a burden. In Jeremiah chapter 23, from verse 34, 33, all the, all the way down to verse 40. The Bible says, verse 33 down to verse, verse, verse 40. It said, and when these people, or the prophet or the preacher, ask this saying, what is the burden of the Lord? Thou sh then shalt thou say unto him, what burden? I will even forsake you, said the Lord. Why? Look at verse 24. And of the, for the prophet and the priest and the people that shall say the burden of the Lord, I will even punish that man and his house. Look at it. It says, Thus shall ye say, everyone to his neighbor and everyone to his brother, what has the Lord answered? And what had the Lord spoken? And verse 36, it said, And the burden of the Lord shall ye mention no more. For every man's word shall become his own burden. For if you have perverted the words of a living God and of the Lord of hosts, our God, the burden of the Lord you shall mention no more. You shall mention no more. Never see any responsibility, any instruction, any commandment from God as a burden. Number two is we must serve God diligently. We must serve God diligently. If we are going to see our rewards, we must serve him diligently. Hebrews 11 and verse 6 
The Bible says that without faith it's impossible to please God, for he that comes to God must believe that he is, and that is a reward of them that diligently seek him. We must serve him diligently. Number three, we must serve God with good will. We must serve God with good will. We must serve him with good will. Ephesians 6, verse 7 and verse 8. Look at what the Bible tells us. It said, with good will, doing service as to the Lord and not to men. We must serve him with good will. And number four, we must serve God tirelessly. We must serve God tirelessly. Consistently, continually, tirelessly. Shout hallelujah. In 1 Corinthians 15, 58, it says to us there, 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 58, it said, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, or movable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. He said, For as much as you know that your labor is not in vain, we must serve him tirelessly. Never be weary. Galatians 6 verse 9, don't be weary in well-doing, for you will reap it in due season. If you fail not, we must serve him tirelessly. Never be weary serving God. One of our brothers stood on this altar to share his testimony. He said, two testimonies, one of them migraine, how God took it away, and the second one was hepatitis B. And according to him, he said that he came to services seeking God to simply call, you know, for his God's servant to simply mention the word hepatitis B. And he said, for two months, he didn't hear that word. As God's servant made declaration, he didn't mention it. He said, but he heard a word saying that Joshua shall live by faith. And he said, suddenly he came to a service and he heard me say in that service that you must bring your strong reasons to God. And he said he went home and wrote down 11 reasons why he cannot have hepatitis B. He said, I'm not switching to kingdom service. I am calling to record all my service. That is, I've been consistent serving God. If you look at the recorded testimony, he said there on, in the writing, serving God on the youth platform, in the service unit, as a transport agent, kingdom advancement prayer, everything, pushing on the frontiers. So he said he got back home, put two chairs down, sat down on one chair, and said, Jesus, sit on the second one. And he listed out 11 reasons why I cannot be afflicted with hepatitis B. Serving God tirelessly. Gave him a record to call up. And by the time he went back for a check, hepatitis B disappeared. God had taken it off. Shout hallelujah. For serving him tirelessly. For serving him tirelessly. For serving him tirelessly. I recall the testimony of one of us who stood on this altar, I believe it was last week Sunday. And she said, she said that she was on a flight coming back to Lagos from Abuja. And suddenly there was turbulence. Everything looked upside down. It seemed like all hell broke loose. The, the aircraft came down 500 feet, sudden drop. Everything was upside down. Said, as she sat in that aircraft, she began to tell God, Lord, the converts that are coming to church, who will pay for their transportation? The one who said he's promising now to come this Sunday, who will bring him to church? She was bringing up the record of her tireless service. And God took over the aircraft and brought the aircraft to a safe landing, saving her life from destruction. The question is, what record can be pulled out in the day of adversity, in the day of trouble? Hear what the Bible says in Psalm chapter 20, beginning from verse 1 to 3. The Lord hear thee in the day of trouble. The name of the God of Jacob defend thee. Look at what it says. Send help from the sanctuary and strengthen thee out of Zion. And look at verse 3. Remember all thy offerings and all thy bond sacrifices. The things that you have as records of your tireless pursuit of God and the answer to the future obstacles of the enemy. This is so important. So we must serve him tirelessly. Never get weary serving God. Never get weary serving God because your service is not just for the present, but it's for the future. Shout hallelujah. Now quickly, what are some of the returns 
of kingdom advancement still watching. If I serve God, what are some of the returns? Number one, is it guarantees express answers to prayer. It guarantees express answers to prayer. It guarantees. When a person gets sold out serving God, listen, your prayer is no longer trial by error. Your prayer is a guarantee for answers. It's a guarantee for answers. Shout hallelujah. Isaiah chapter 58 and verse 9. Look at what the Bible says. Then shall thou call, and the Lord shall answer thee. It's talking about a particular category of people. Those who serve God are entitled to answers to prayer. John 15 and verse 16. Jesus said, you have not chosen me, but I've chosen you. And I've ordained you to go and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should remain. That whatsoever you ask the Father in my name, he may give it unto you. So there is a guaranteed platform for answers to prayer. I've shared this experience before in the year 2008. God's servant, our father here, sat with me one day and he looked at me and made a statement. And that statement stayed with, I stayed with me and will remain with me all the days of my life. He looked at me and he said, David, I know God hears me when I pray. I know God hears me when I pray. There's a platform you can stand that prayer is not just like, like playing at you. There are so many Christians today that even when they pray, they are surprised when they answered. It's not a surprise to be ignored. It's when they answer, is even when they are surprised. I prayed to and God answered me. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? It's a surprise to them that there's an answer. But there is a platform you stand that when you call on God, God say, look, I will answer. When you cry, we say, here I am. What do you want? Mention it, I do it. And what positions you on that platform is the pursuit of his agenda. When you get sold out to God, your prayer life begins to operate with ease. Shout hallelujah. You are not struggling and struggling and struggling with matters. You pick up items on the altar of prayer and instantly there's a response. God's servant said years ago, he said, Lord, will you not wait for one to even ask before you answer? He said, there's a company of people. Before they ask, I answer. While they are still speaking, I say I'm here. Before they ask, there is a platform for guaranteed answers to prayer. Brethren, we don't need to be doing trial and error when it comes to prayer. There is a place you can stand that when you speak, heaven responds on the spot and without hesitation. When you speak, heaven responds. You know, the Bible tells us that Elijah went before the king and he said, there would be no rain or dew except by my word. And he went before God and spoke to God and the heavens were sealed. When it was time for the heavens to be opened, he bent down and began to pray. And the Bible tells us that he sent his servant, go to the sea and come back. And the servant said, Lord, there is nothing. He said, there cannot be nothing. I'm not the type that pray and nothing happens. When I pray, God always answers. Go back again. He went back, came back again. Master, there is nothing. He said, go back again. He sent him back seven times. I can't pray and God not answer. That's Elijah. I can't pray and God not answer. So there is a position you and I can take. That when we stand to pray, there's a guarantee of answers. Shout hallelujah. No more prayer failure for any one of us. If you believe it, say the loudest amen. I said no more prayer failure for any one of us. In the name of Jesus Christ. Number two, it guarantees divine exemption from the evil day. Divine exemption from the evil day. He said in Malachi chapter 3, verse 17 and 18, I will spare them like one who spares his own son that served him. Then he will return and discern between the righteous and the wicked, between him that serves God and him that serves him not. And chapter 4, verse 1 and 2 says that the day will come when the earth will burn like an oven, but there are some individuals that will be exempted from the evil day. And those individuals are the ones who serve him. Shout hallelujah. Exemption from the evil day. Number three. It secures access to our high places. Access to our high places. Access 
to our high places. Access to our high places. Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 2 down to verse 4, tells us about the reviving of the work of God. And verse 17 to 19 tells us that those who are engaged in that reviving of the work will walk up to their own high places. They will ascend their high places. Somebody is going to his own high place. If you believe it, say loud, amen. amen. Number four, it secures establishment in the faith. Establishment in the faith. It secures establishment in the faith. One of the returns, we get established in the faith. There is no, we are not plucked off because the branch that brings forth fruit, he purges, purges it. But the one that does not bring forth fruit, he breaks it off, he cuts it off. So it keeps us planted and rooted. When you are committed to serving God, when you are committed to pursuing after God, you remain rooted in the faith. You discover that many times, before anyone can backslide, the first thing that happens is there is a killing of the zeal. The passion for God begins to go down. It is after it has gone down that the person begins to take step backwards. If you want to remain established in the faith, then keep your heart for God, your service to God active. Shout hallelujah. Keep it active. Keep it active. Keep it alive. And finally, number five, is it secures eternity with Christ. Eternity with Christ. It comes as a return of our stewardship. Those who keep serving God, their position for eternity with Christ. We look at the example of Paul the Apostle, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 6 down to verse 8. The Bible tells us there, it says, For I'm now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. Look at verse 7. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Now there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous John, shall give unto me this day, and not only, only me, but all those that love is appearing. Those who are committed to running after his cause. He said there is a crown of righteousness awaiting them. So there's eternity secure in Christ. None of us will miss our eternal home. Amen. Somebody believe it, say loud, amen. amen. I said none of us will miss our eternal home. Amen. I said none of us will miss our eternal home. Amen. None of us today will miss our eternal home. Amen. If you believe it, say loud, amen. Eternity is the greatest treasure available to man. Please hear this. All that we have on the earth is temporal. Those who conclude their journey with Christ are the ones who ultimately reign in life. So it is one of the, it is not one, it is the most vital treasure of anyone's work with God. Again, I pray that no one hearing my voice today will miss our eternal home with Christ. If you believe it, say loud, amen. Now, today is our covenant day of breaking generational causes, and we're going to be looking at the biblical sources of generational causes and the cures. There is the source, and there are the cures. Proverbs chapter 26 and verse 2. The Bible tells us there, it says, As the bird by wandering and the swallow by flying, so the curse, causeless, shall not come. So to every curse, there is a cause. We must find out the cause and then we locate the cures to terminate the cause. I have good news for somebody hearing my voice this morning. Every cause hanging upon your life, your family, your lineage, today shall be shattered. In the name of Jesus. We look at five of them quickly before we pray. Number one is the curse of God. The curse of God. And we have this registered in the book of Genesis chapter 3. After man fell into sin. Genesis 3 from verse 16 down to verse 19. We see here how curses came upon mankind. Unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow shalt thou bring forth children and thy desire shall be unto thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. Verse 17, it says, And unto Adam he said, Because thou hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat thereof. He said, Cursed is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of their life. You just discovered that when the curse came, sorrow started showing up everywhere. 
sorrow everywhere. He said, in, you, there will be, I will multiply the sorrow of your conception and in sorrow will you bring forth. I will cause the ground for your sake and in sorrow will you be able to partake of what it has to offer. So sorrow multiplied everywhere as one of the effects of the cause. The cause of God. Today, somebody is rescued from it in the name of Jesus. In Exodus chapter 20, verse 4 and verse 5, we see one of the origins of this cause of God. He said, thou shalt not make any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Verse 5, it says, thou shalt not bow thyself to it nor serve them. For I, the Lord God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and the fourth generation of them that hate me. That's talking about the cause of God. So we find the cause of God that came on man by sin. We see the cause of the Lord that comes by bowing oneself to graven images. We also see the cause of the Lord that the Bible says in the house of the thief. Zechariah chapter 5 verse 1 down to verse 4. All these are platforms for the cause of the Lord. Now what is the way out? Number one is obedience. Obedience. If you want to escape the cause of God, obedience is a vital key. Obedience. Deuteronomy 20, 28 verse 1 down to verse 13. If you hearken diligently and do all I command you, these blessings will come. So obedience is a vital key. Number two is serving God with joyfulness. Serving God with joyfulness. This is what makes our stewardship to begin to answer and produce results. So serving God with joyfulness. Number one, we said is obedience. And number two is serving God with joyfulness. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 47 and verse 48. Number two is the cause of the law. The cause of the law. So the first one is the cause of God. Number two is the cause of the law. And we don't have the time, but when you get back, read the book of Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 15 to 66. All kinds of causes. Summarized under three categories. Sickness, death, and poverty. Three categories. But the cause of the law. The way out of the cause of the law, number one, is you must be born again. You must be born again. Christ has redeemed us from the cause of the law, being made a cause for us. For it is causes everyone that hangs upon the tree that the blessing of Abraham may come upon the Gentiles. Number two is stay in love with God. Stay in love with God. When your heart goes out after God, you are secure from the hold of the cause of the law. Shout hallelujah. I say shout hallelujah. Number three is the cause of devils. The cause of devils. The cause of devils. Now, when you look at the cause of God, it is because of man's disobedience. It is because of man bowing to graven images. It is because of man disobeying the instructions of God. When you look at the cause of the law, it is violating the law of God that brings that cause. But the cause of devils is simply the, the devil himself just inflicting a cause without you having done anything. Please hear this. We live in a very wicked world. The Bible said that the whole world lies in wickedness. Satan is on the loose, seeking for ways to inflict sorrow upon humanity. And that is why we must find the pathway to subdue the cause of devils. How do we do that? Number one is be born again. Be born again. Be born again. Colossians 1 verse 13. He said he has translated us from the power of darkness and has brought us into the kingdom of his dear son. Be born again. When a man becomes born again, you are taken out of the camp of the wicked. You are brought under the canopy of Jehovah. Number two is be committed to serving God. Be committed to serving God. When you are sold out serving God, Satan has no hold on you. Satan has no hold on you. Satan has no hold on you. You have practical dominion over the works of the devil. Shout hallelujah. Practical dominion. So we have the cause of devils. The fourth cause is the cause of man. The cause of man. The cause of man. And that is where you have human entities that stand up to invoke causes. 
In fact, we had one that was read to us in the testimony today. That individual said in their family, somebody had come for the hand of the sister in marriage when the sister was a little girl. The father thought it was a joke. So he drove him away. The man came back again. He said, no, this girl will go to school. And the man laid a curse on the family. None of them will get married. And the siege was on that family. 50 years he stood on that family until Jesus stepped in and broke the curse. For somebody hearing my voice, every human invoked curse upon any life here present shall be destroyed in the name of Jesus. If you believe it, say a loud amen. I said, if you believe it, say a loud amen. What's the way out? Number one, be born again and keep your faith alive. Be born again and keep your faith alive. First John 5 verse 4, whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Number two, be committed to serving God so as to remain under his blessings. Be committed to serving God so as to remain under his blessings. Because when the blessing of God rests upon a life, anyone that causes that life is cursed. Be committed to serving God so as to remain under his blessings. Be committed to serving God so as to remain under his blessings. I recall a number of years ago, while in, a, um, in my former place of assignment, a particular family, very committed, very dedicated, and they had a strong man in the family back in Sierra Leone. And this man was an occultic man that would just call and be announcing, this person is going to die next. This person is going to die next. This one will die next. And he called and then began to announce to this family that they are the ones who will die next. And this family committed to God, came to a service like this, and received the word that quickened their faith. Inside the service, in the middle of the service, they got a, a, a message in the middle of the service that the man died while the service was going on. Because when you curse one that is serving God, God curses him back on your behalf. For somebody hearing my voice, from this day, your life, your family becomes a no-go area. But the good news is that you don't have to allow the devil have the last say. When Goliath spoke and cursed David, David spoke and cursed Goliath. The Bible says in the book of Isaiah chapter 54 and verse 17, no weapon formed against you shall prosper and every tongue that shall rise up against thee in judgment, thou shalt condemn. Thou shalt condemn. You open fire back. Is somebody getting it? Some years ago, somebody made the mistake to cross me and release certain words. And I have learned from David, when the devil gives you one sentence, give him ten sentences. So I responded and refired back. The person went to beg, please help us beg him. Help us beg him. I refired back in kind. One, two, three, four. The person was regretting the initial step. He said, please beg him. Don't let the devil have the last say. When he speaks one, speak ten. Fire for fire. Is somebody getting what God is saying? From now, you will become a no-go area. And finally, and most dangerous of all, is self-inflicted causes. Self-inflicted causes. Jeremiah chapter 2 verse 14 to 17. All kinds of calamity took place. He said, have you not procured this upon yourself? Self-inflicted causes. Let's be cautious to avoid any self-inflicted cause. Many people carry matters with their mouth that don't concern you. We live in a very opinionated generation. Everybody want, wants to say something. If somebody is blessed by God, you carry your mount and attack him with your mount, God fights on his behalf without even the person knowing. Let's be very cautious. Let's be very cautious. Let's guard our lips. Let's guard our mouth. Don't be, don't be probed into conversations that will bring about destruction for you. Shout hallelujah. 
This is so important. So let us ensure we don't procure causes upon ourselves. Somebody came some time ago. He was speaking against God's servant. God's servant was not aware. But suddenly he became inflicted with a horrible mouth odor. Horrible. That is one day your mouth is smelling normal. The, the next day it has become like latrine. You can, that is, you mistalk. So God gave you a reason not to be able to talk again. Until God had mercy and intervened. My prayer today is that for anyone that may have been a victim of this, may the Lord have mercy upon each one. Amen. What's the way out? Return to the Lord. That is, rededicate your life to Christ. That's the first step. Return to the Lord or rededicate your life to Christ. And number two is be delighted in obeying God so you can keep living under his blessings. I pray today that the Lord will grant each one of us the grace to keep in line with the word we have received. Lift your hand before the Lord, appreciate him, and give him thanks for his word that he received today. Father, thank you for your word that has come my way. I give you the praise. I give you the glory. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Somebody believe, say loud, amen. amen. Before we go any further right now, you are here in this service. You have not surrendered to Jesus. This is your opportunity. Until you are in Christ, life remains in crisis. You don't assume salvation. You obtain salvation by taking a public decision for Christ. Wherever you are right now, you say, Pastor, I want to be truly born again. I don't want people to just call me a Christian. I want God to call me his child. I want to be known by God as his child. Wherever you are, quickly stand on your feet. I want to pray with you right now, right here, this moment. I want to be born again. I want to become a child of God. Wherever you are, quickly stand on your feet. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Are you clapping for Jesus? They are standing everywhere. Thank you, Lord. Blessed be your name. Secondly, there are those who need to rededicate their lives to Christ. Something has gone wrong. Maybe you went into issues you should not enter. You found yourself now disconnected from God. Causes of life ravaging every department. And you say, Lord, I want to return now so I can be restored. Wherever you are, you want to rededicate your life to Jesus, quickly stand on your feet. I want to pray with you now. God bless you. God bless you. You want to rededicate your life to Jesus? Quickly stand on your feet. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you, Lord. If you have responded to the first and to the second call, please stop filling any form right now and just lift up your right hand before the Lord and pray this prayer after me from the depth of your heart. Say after me, Lord Jesus, loud and clear, Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I am a sinner. I cannot help myself. But I know you died for me. On the third day, you rose again just to save me. Jesus, have mercy upon me. Cleanse me from my sin. Wash me by your blood. Make me a new man. Now I know that I am born again. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Keep your hand lifted as I pray. Father, thank you today for these precious people. They have responded to your call. I ask that you will grant each one of them the grace to keep following you all the days of their lives and never ever turn back. Thank you for doing it, Lord. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen. Somebody believe, say loud, amen. amen. It is done. In Jesus' precious name. Congratulations. Please take your seat. <laughs> Complete the form that has been given to you by the officials and submit it to the one who is closest to you. And right after that, You'll be given a we love you card after the service. you take that card to any of the new convert tents outside the major entrances to the tabernacle. you drop the card there and pick up the gift item that is there waiting for you. Also, we have our Believers Foundation class. It takes place every Monday. You attend just two Mondays, tomorrow Monday and the upper Monday, and you have a very firm foundation to have a glorious walk with God. If you're unable to make the physical class for one reason or the other because of prior commitments, you have the online class available. The details are going to be put on the screen, bfc.lfcww.org. You can partake of the class online also, but make sure you give it full concentration. And as you do, you will have your own personal visitation. Congratulations in the name of Jesus Christ. Shall we rise on our feet, everybody, and lift your hand before the Lord? From the depth of your heart right now, speak to him. 
Lord, this area, this is this particular area where this thing seems to be manifesting. One cycle of evil or the other that is taking place, it must be brought to an end today. Lift your voice and pray. This very hour in this area, is it marital delay? Is it career stagnation? Whatever it is, go before the Lord and present your cause unto him right now, right here, right now, right here. This is my own heart desire. On this mountain, according to your word, there shall be deliverance. Therefore, every siege, every hold, every curse must be broken today, this hour, this moment, upon this mountain, in the name of Jesus. Pray for yourself right now. Pray for yourself right now. Pray for yourself right now. It is a cry for intervention. It is a cry for intervention. It is a cry for intervention. Lord, this very moment, at this very hour, I declare, Lord, an instant end to this cycle of evil. In the name of Jesus, there must be an end, an utter end, in the name of Jesus Christ. Lift your hand before the Lord and glorify him for the answer. Thank you, mighty God. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen. Somebody believe, say a loud amen. amen. Give Jesus a big hand as we receive our Father to bless us. Hallelujah. How many are already free here? The siege is over. Um, by a prophet, the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt. And by a prophet was he preserved. I decree your unquestionable escape today. The siege of stagnation, frustration, failure is declared over. The curse of marital delay, marital frustration, marital unrest is declared broken. The curse of poverty, sickness, and death is declared broken. Everyone appointed to death by the wickedness of the wicked is hereby delivered. Yeah. See, and uh, they are for a pre and non delivery and non self restore. Now, in the name of the Lord Jesus, whatever the enemy has robbed you of over time, I decree restoration. Yeah. I decree restoration. I decree restoration. I decree restoration. The cross of mediocrity in anyone's family or lineage where you walk and walk and nothing seems to be working. Amen. You find the same trend, grandfather great-grandfather in rented houses all their life. It's a father, children, all that. Business, always crawling. What about represents a lineage curse, a curse on your generation that impacted you in anyone's life? I command that curse broken. In the name of Jesus. Now, light is the master of darkness. Any day, any time. A woman in Kinshasa was reading the book When Invisible Battles in French. Before she got halfway, a human figure, more or less, or somehow, walked out of her life. Her problem has been misfortune. Near success, success collapsed. When we're about touching success, it just appears. She could feel somebody following her, but she couldn't tell. But light came, that devil walked out. Now, grace to commit to light that will secure your permanent freedom from the assault of the past of darkness. Receive it right now. Yeah. 
after I got the light from um, Ephesians 2 and verse 6, and then Ephesians 1, 20 and 21, I asked that devil, what do you do? That witch, he said, when we want to stop blow, we stand on the right way. So what when people like us are coming? So when we say the higher power on the way, we clear up. You know the higher power, the powers of darkness recognize light. When light shows up, darkness backs out. Whenever light shows up, darkness backs out. Whenever light shows up, darkness backs out. I therefore declare you uncursable. Yeah. I declare your life uncursable. Yeah. Your family uncursable. Yeah. Your business uncursable. Yeah. I'm not a bookseller. I'm a light bearer. Please get the book, Satan get lost. <laughs> You'll be out. Get the book breaking the course of life. You walk free. That lawyer read that book and everything turned. The senior brother went to college, couldn't finish. He also went, he was executed. After he got that light, he went back to school, he became a lawyer. According to him, he had 11 cars. Nobody had a car in their family before. We have to buy for all of them. <laughs> Amen. Amen. The curse was broken by light. Mm. Broken by what? Light. light. Broken by light. light. Broken by light. light. Light will break any cause of darkness. Yes. Even the human beings that cause you, the men that cause you, they are instigated by the devil. So when you hit their root, mm -hmm. there'll be no, no, no more effect. Everybody needs light. Yes. Satan is not afraid of your coat, mm. whether it's white or green. <laughs> Amen. Amen. <laughs> For light. Amen. Light. Therefore, in the name of the Lord Jesus, no devil takes any one of us to a ride anymore. <laughs> the good news is, from now, your liberty from crosses shall begin to manifest in testimony. <laughs> your career breaks forth. The years of walking in the same around the same spot, they are over. Yeah. Your business breaks forth. Yeah. The years of stagnation are over. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. And now receive the spirit of obedience. Yeah. It's the greatest asset in walking in the covenant. Obedience to the terms of the covenant. Receive that spirit of obedience today in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Let me close by saying the covenant of scriptures is stronger than the most wicked devil in hell. Only those who can break the covenant of the day and the night can break the covenant of scripture with God's people. It's stronger than the greatest, the, the, the most wicked witch, the strongest court on the earth. <laughs> you can't break my covenant of the day and night. You can't break my covenant with my people. It's unbreakable. Oh, this somebody in my house is following me. He will stop following you. When you stand in the covenant, he will be hitting the rock. Abba. No matter how heady you are, if you hear the rock, it will break. It will break. <laughs> it will break. All we need is the spirit of obedience that helps you walk in the last of obedience in season and out of season. Don't find reason to argue against the truth. It's foolishness. Don't look for reasons. God said it. I believe it. And that set you see. God said it. And I believe it. That set you see. Now, receive that spirit in the name of Jesus. <laughs> it is not faith that rescues, it's obedience of faith. Mm. Faith is not believing God, it's obeying God to prove that you believe Him. It's obedience of faith. I believe God, He was made poor for me to make, that's okay. Obedience of faith to what makes rich is what makes it work. <laughs> obedience of faith. Now, receive that grace this morning. In the name of Jesus. You have come to this rescue house. Anyone that won't let you go must go for you. 
you have come to this rescue house. Anyone that won't let you go must go for you. Anyone that won't let your family go must go for you. Anyone that won't let your business go must go for you. Friends, this is a liberation home. This what? This is a you heard the testimony that somebody shared now? Liberation home. Why must you pay for what Christ has paid for? Get back here, my friend. And after eight hours of livelessness, came back to life. It's a rescue home. You are not here for one church activity. You are here for a rescue. In the name of Jesus, I declare you rescue. Every pit dug for you, the one that digs it will fall in the place. Every incantation made on your name and your family, the cause thereof goes on their head. Every native doctor hired against you, both the one that hired the doctor and the doctor himself, they are done for. They are done for. Now, you hear news this week. You will hear news this week. That the ones pursuing you are falling. You will hear news this week. That the ones pursuing you are falling. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Next Sunday is Easter Miracle Banquet. Because all services are miracle services. There will be no special healing service on Easter day. Service one is miracle. Service two is miracle. Service three is miracle. And I hear you, amen. Amen. So get ready. He will manifest himself with many infallible proofs. On the spot transportation, transformation testimonies. On the spot transformation testimonies. On the spot transformation testimony. It's also going to be a special communion service, post-resurrection communion service, for spiritual eye-opening that we might understand the scriptures. Amen. Our understanding will change level. Amen. As you're coming for that service, I'll be an awesome time. Complete miracle. Amen. Amen. Grave opening miracle. Amen. What's a grave? Every choking situation is a grave. No more choking. Amen. No more choking. Amen. No more choking. Amen. No more choking. Amen. Everything dying or dead in anyone will bounce back to life. Amen. Because why seek you the living among the dead? It's not here. Is risen. And when we are redeemed, we are raised up together with them. We cannot be found among the dead. Therefore, in the name of Jesus, next Sunday service shall be your service. Amen. Easter is not a celebration, it's an encounter. It's an encounter. He showed himself alive. He said, showing up. Jesus showing himself up. I'm here. I'm alive. I'm well. I'm in charge. Thank you, Jesus. So come prepare. Now that you are free from courses, it's time to collect back. All that you have lost, it shall happen in that service. Amen. Lift up your two hands. Help me praise God. Magnify him. No one like him. Thank you, Jesus. For all those involved in th the three outreaches, be openly rewarded. Amen. For all those involved in bringing people into church, be openly rewarded. Amen. For all those who brought in their items for kingdom care matters, be openly rewarded. Amen. And in the name of Jesus, a brand new day for you. Amen. Like you had in the announcement, we have some individuals coming up with quite some substance to help in mobilizing people to come into church. That's why the announcement on if you have any idea of transporters that can be added to what we have in our various zones to help in moving people in at the cost of the church as people give. Please do. We are doing that this week, and we're working hard at it. In Jesus' name, we'll be honored. Can I hear you say amen? amen? Every investment into the kingdom is a wise investment. 
the dividends are beyond description. Get excited, get involved. Give the Lord a big hand of praise. Jesus. Let's share the goodness of the Lord together in fellowship. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Peace. Praise God. Fortune is my portion in 2024. Congratulations. Amen and amen. Congratulate somebody as you go and be blessed as you do so. If you came in after the worship offering was received, there are officials around the altar and various exits carrying late offering tags. Do well to drop your offering and be blessed as you do so. All our new converts, be reminded to take the We Love You card you have been given to any of the new convert tents. You drop the card there and pick up the gift item that is waiting for you. And finally, if you want to share your testimony in the special healing miracle service, you come right to the front of any one of the arms. Our pastors will be right there to take your testimonies. Be blessed. Please, officials, let's clear the first two rows of each one of the arms for those who are there to share testimonies or those who have mobility issues to find their way to those locations. God bless you.
Let's all be on our feet this afternoon as we enter the fourth service. Let's lift up our voices. If you are able to stand, why not be on your feet? If you are not able to stand, just lift up your voice and talk to God. Give him praise. Give him glory. This is the fourth service. It's a miracle healing service. God has declared, I am the God that healed thee. The God that healed us is in the house again this afternoon. Lift up your voice. Begin to declare your desires. This afternoon, somebody's story is taking a better turn. Somebody's story is changing. God is putting laughter in somebody's mouth. If you are that person, lift up your voice again this afternoon. Give him praise. Give him glory. Express your expectation before him. Let him know that you have come to meet with him. That your faith is in him. Let God know that you have come to meet with him. And your faith is in him. You believe in him. And you expect what he is going to do today. Our father, this hour, we have come to meet with you. You are our healer. You have said, I am the God that healed thee. This afternoon we have come, oh God, that the healing power will be in full manifestation again. Our Father, touch everyone whose faith is online today. Touch everyone and turn stories around. You have done it before, do it again this afternoon. You have called this service, special miracle healing service. Let it answer fully to his name, our God and our King. Do what only you can do. Heal the sick, restore the oppressed. Deliver the oppressed in the name of Jesus, our Father. In this service this afternoon, turn loose everyone's desire. Make it a reality. Let there be celebration. Let there be special miracle healing even in this service. Let your hand flow by your word. Deliver the desires by your word. Let healing flow by your word. Let healing flow. By your word, let healing flow and let your name be glorified. Our Father, we thank you. Now lift up your hands, wave them to heaven. God has heard us. Father, we thank you. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' holy name, we are praying. Put your blessings together for Jesus as we receive the Faith Tabernacle Choir. Somebody lift your hands to Jesus as we worship him this morning. You are worthy, oh Lord. You are worthy, oh Lord. Invisible God, the miracle worker. You are worthy, oh Lord. You are worthy. You are worthy. Oh, God. 
Jesus. Give you praise, give you praise. Awesome God. 
bigger, bigger, bigger hand of praise and shout hallelujah. Please be seated. Please listen to the faith tabernacle announcement for this service. Number one, praise the Lord. To the glory of God, our corporate church outreach was a great success with about 7,000 saved and several other thousand invited for service across our WSF areas as at the time of this report. Give Jesus a bigger hand of praise. May everyone reached for Jesus be established in the faith and this church for life. And may everyone actively engaging in this season be openly rewarded in Jesus' name. Number two, good news. To the glory of God, a number of kingdom promoters are how to see all converts and challenge members brought to church. Therefore, the church is in search of transporters for the massive harvest of souls that God has has given us in this season. We are admonished to provide necessary details at our various WSF area offices on the church website by clicking on the transportation banner or using the transporters update link circulated on our various WSF platforms. Number three, covenant hour of prayer continues tomorrow, Monday to Saturday. Remember this oath in over 600 locations across Lagos and Alta. Time, 5.30 to 6.30 a.m. Number four, praise the Lord. Our Believers Foundation Class BFC for all our new converts and new members owed tomorrow, Monday. Note that these can either be live at any of our WSF centers across Lagos, Alta, and Everons, or online at the address displayed on the screen. Details on the closest location to all our new converts and new members shall be sent via SMS. Time, 6 to 7.30 p.m. Number five, praise the Lord. Midweek service hosts this coming Wednesday, both here in Kenalan and at all Zona Fellowship Centers in Lagos, Ota and Everons. Remember, we shall be waiting on the Lord in a fast and break with the communion. Time, 6 p.m. Number six, praise the Lord. Easter Youth Alive Conference, AYAC 2024, comes up this week from Thursday 28th to Saturday 30th, March 2024. I thought somebody was clapping for Jesus. The theme is Renewal. All youth shall be gathered across our various clusters across Lagos. However, all areas in altar will be gathered here in Canaan. Youths are encouraged to prayerfully prepare and plan to attend. Follow all youth alive social media and those for details. Number seven, good news. Yesterday, there was a massive response of members to the Kingdom Care Covenant as many brought non-perishable food items and clothing items to the central collection centers. To the glory of God, our distribution commences this coming Wednesday in over 200 distribution centers. As part of our continuous commitment to the Kingdom Care Covenant, every Saturday, the central collection centers will be open to receive items from members, and the distribution centers will distribute to all members who require them following laid-down modalities. Number eight, Winners Satellite Fellowship, our house-to-house -house fellowship or this coming Saturday at our WSF centers across Lagos and Ota. Remember that we shall be praying for one another. Invite and neighbor to partake in this fellowship time, time 5 to 6 p.m. For all our new converts and new members, please note that we do not collect offerings at our home cell meetings. This is without prejudice to those who pay for bosses or pay the way of other members or converts to and from church. And number nine, good news. Next Sunday, 31st March 2024, shall be our special Easter miracle banquet. And it shall also clap some more for Jesus. 
and it shall also double as our special end of month Thanksgiving marriage and children dedication service. The resurrection power will be moving among us. Come expecting an encounter with a prophetic word. It shall be a service to be much remembered. Come along with your converts, invitees, and other loved ones for an encounter of a lifetime. There shall be three services, times 6 a.m., 7.55 a.m., and 9.50 a.m. Jesus is Lord. Let's celebrate Jesus one more time. Praise the Lord. In this special healing service, we shall be singing our congregational hymn, It's So Sweet to Trust in Jesus. Shall we arise and sing unto the Lord as the choir leads us? Choir.
together for Jesus is worthy. Amen. Let's click clapping for Jesus. Give the Lord a big, big, big clap of praise. Amen. In this special healing service this afternoon, it is testimony time. So shall it be for you in Jesus' precious name. As we listen to these documented testimonies, you shall be blessed. Amen. Number one, healed of tuberculosis. I had been suffering from tuberculosis for a very long time. On hearing of the last anointing service, I was carried into the church from the hospital because I could neither walk nor stand. The bishop while ministering on the anointing oil said, when you take a shot of the oil, the power of God it contains will destroy every sickness and disease that followed you to church this morning. When I heard this, I knew he was talking to me. After I took a shot of the anointing oil, I was healed. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now I can walk and stand on my own by myself. Every symptom vanished. I thank God for my healing. Give the Lord a big clap of praise. The testifier is D. Esther. Praise the Lord. Number two, healed of partial stroke. For over a year, I had been experiencing pains in my leg. In February 2024, I felt the pain in my hands and noticed my hands started to shake. Due to the severity of the pain, I decided to go to the hospital where I did some tests which revealed I had a partial stroke. Some drugs were prescribed, but I could not afford them. So I came to the healing service and partook of the communion. Now I am healed. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I return all the glory to God. The testifier is Ojo Emmanuel. You shall be the next to testify. Give the Lord a big clap of praise. One more time for those amazing testimonies. Let's give Jesus a big, big, big hand of praise. Right now in this service, it is my privilege to welcome some special people worshiping with us for the first time. If today is your first time here at the Faith Tabernacle, may I request that you lift up your hand wherever you are seated. Just indicate by waving your hands. Church, let's give Jesus a big hand as they do that. All across the Tabernacle right now, just wave your hands wherever you are seated. And if by any means you cannot let those seated beside them, please help wave your hands. Let's give Jesus another big hand. Our officials will place in your hand a welcome pack along with a card for you to fill in the course of this welcome. I want to specially welcome you on behalf of Jesus Christ, the head of the church universal, and his apostle, his servant, the apostle over this great commission, Bishop David Oyedepo. What is unique about this church? This church is ordained a house of liberation by a divine mandate where God stops the tears of men and women, old and young, boys and girls, where God terminates all oppressions of the devil and confers breakthroughs on all members as they believe. God has not ceased to confirm his word since this mandate was delivered over four decades ago. If you will endeavor to abide in this church and commit to following every scriptural instruction you receive here for the next three months, the Lord God will bless you openly as a day to obey them. I want to welcome you today to this breakthrough family and may today be your entry into the realms of unstoppable breakthroughs that you have always longed for in the name of Jesus Christ. Church, let's say louder, amen. Therefore, to all our first-time worshipers, we say to you, welcome home. Let's give Jesus a big, big hand for all of these precious people. May I request at this point to all our first-time worshipers, kindly 
Rise on your feet if you can for a word of prayer and blessing. Please kindly rise on your feet and bow your heads as we pray. Heavenly Father, again this afternoon, we just want to thank you for these precious ones that you have brought here this afternoon to worship with us. We ask in the name of Jesus Christ, as you've brought them to bless them, let each and every one of them return from this service supernaturally blessed. If they left any issue of concern before coming, let it be upon their return. Let such issues be converted to open testimonies. And if there be any one of them that is not yet born again, yet to have an encounter with you, let this service mark their own salvation. And by all means, let each and every single one of them return with a testimony from this service. Thank you, precious Father. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Church, let's say louder. Amen. Please be comfortably seated. Complete filling those cards and pass them to the officials beside you once you are done. One more time, you are welcome. God richly bless you. Church, let's give the Lord a big, big hand. Praise the Lord. Right now in this service, it's time for personal supplication. Praise God. For the next few minutes, we shall be going before the Almighty God. Each one of us will speak to him, and we shall be doing that personally, presenting our expectation for this service. You and I are here, and God is saying to you and I, my son, my daughter, what do you want me to do for you? None of us shall return empty-handed in Jesus' name. John 14, 13 shall be our anchor scripture. The Bible says, and whatsoever you shall ask in my name, whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Whatever you and I ask from God right now, God will deliver it into our hands. Can I hear louder? Amen. Amen. Please rise upon your feet with this understanding. As many as can rise up and can stand, please stand upon your feet. Lift up your voice to God right now and speak to him. Whatever your needs are, it's covered by whatsoever, whatsoever, whatsoever you shall ask. So ask in the name of Jesus, lift up your voice, speak to the Lord right now. Make known to him your expectation. Tell him your desire. Pray in your understanding. Pray from your heart. Pray in the Holy Ghost and let heaven hear you right now. Our answers are waiting, but we have a responsibility to ask. Someone is praying right now. Pray from your heart. You're praying for yourself, making known to God your expectation, your desire for this service. It says, whatsoever, ask right now. Few seconds left. Ask in his name. Ask in faith. Ask based on his word. 
that cannot fail. He's here for you and I. Now I begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. Father, in the name of Jesus the Christ, Meneka Totaria Gada Makori Makoshadala. The price has been fully paid. Nekatoria. Jesus said, It is finished. Nekato Papu, Ebrobaga, Eliga Tarala, Elamo Kashodia. The price has been fully paid. Enegatoria, Akakato Parida, Anegato Paria, Nanaraba, Egalaka, Eriama Koshada. Begin to thank God right now for answers to your prayer. Begin to thank Him right now because your desires are delivered. Begin to thank Him right now. Give Him praise, give Him glory, magnify His name. Thank Him some more. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. The answers are here. We give you thanks and praise. It is done. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And loud and believe in Amen. Amen. Please take your seat. Put your hands together for the Lord. In this special healing miracle service this afternoon, it is offering time. I said it's offering time. If you have not done so, quickly begin to package your worship offering that you have brought to honor Jesus in his presence. We're reminded you can give using any of our various giving channels, electronically using the various channels that are right now displayed on the screen. You can use a check, making it payable to Faith Tabernacle Canaan Land, and you can give using cash offerings, packaging it neatly in an envelope and label it as such. As we do that this afternoon, we're reminded of God's word in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 7. The word of God declares, He said, Every man, according as he proposes in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. As we lavish our love on God via our offerings today, he will lavish his love on us by perfecting all that concerns us today in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Would you rise on your feet with me this afternoon and lift up your seat before the Lord as you present it in honor of Jesus, expressing your love, your admiration, and adoration unto him. Just celebrate him for the privilege and the honor that you have to be in his presence today as a seat sower. Lord, we have come to say thank you. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' precious name we have prayed. Keep your seat lifted. Our Father, this afternoon we have come in honor of you, presenting our seed today. Let the seed be acceptable in your sight in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father, for it. In Jesus' precious name. Somebody believe, say loud, amen. amen. It is done. Please take your seat comfortably. Cast your seed in joy as the Faith Tabernacle Choir Ministers.
is making the way for you and me today. Is making the way out of that predicament today. Is making the way out of that trouble today. It's making the way out of that sickness today. In the name of Jesus. Lift up your two hands if you can. And give God thanks for bringing you to this pool of Bethesda. Where everyone that jumps in is made whole of whatever disease. Today's your day. Give him thanks because today's your day. Give him thanks because today's your day. Give him thanks. You are coming out today. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' precious name. Jesus, thank you for this time in your presence. You are the master physician. You are the great physician. You have gathered to you for your healing power to be made manifest. Let your power flow. Let every sickness be destroyed. Let your name be glorified. Let each one desire today be delivered for a testimony. In Jesus' name. Give the Lord a big hand of praise. And please get seated. Unveiling the mystery of healing. Yes, it's our heritage in redemption. But how do we realize it? How do we assess it? How do we come to enjoy it? So the mystery of access to the healing power is what we are here to examine for the few minutes we have. And in the name of the Lord Jesus, with an open heart, your case will be set. Your case will be set. Your case will be set. God came on and said, I will put none of these diseases upon you that I put upon Egypt. For I am the Lord that healed thee. And your case will be set. Your case will so he has a healing covenant for us. And Jesus, the great physician, came to make that manifest by healing all sins and all healing all manner of diseases. Matthew 4:23. Matthew and Jesus went about all Galilee Jesus, he lost to change their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. And then in the evening time, all men gathered to him. They were afflicted with devils. And he was casting out evil spirits into the world. Matthew 8 and verse 16. When the evening was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils and cast out the spirits with his word and healed all that was sick. 
and it just remember. They remember. It was written that himself took our infirmities and bear our sicknesses. So we had a healing right established in scriptures. First Peter 2 Peter 2.24 By whose stripes you are healed. So it's settled into our account. Let me speak But how do we assess this blessing of redemption? What does it take? Knowing what's available is information. Revelation is knowing what to do to assess it. What is it? What is required of me? To realize what has been provided. Many run, many run around talking about what is provided. They have no idea whatsoever about to make it a reality in their lives. The kingdom operates on covenant. So when you hear about the Old Testament and the New Testament, it's talking about the old covenant and the new covenant. The two are now ratified in Christ. A covenant means this is are my provisions and these are the conditions that you must meet to assess the provisions. So what are the conditions for experiencing the reality of our healing inheritance in Christ? It's a two-fold term. He sent his word and it healed him. But his word that he sent will not deliver without the faith of the recipient. So it's word that triggers faith in the heart is what brings in the healing virtue. Divine healing will never deliver without active faith in the healing world of Christ. Now, let me shock you with this. Prayer does not heal. It is a prayer of faith. Is any sick among you? Call upon the elders of the church. Let them pray over him. Anointing with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith. We hear the sea. And the anointing will raise him up. And no prayer could hear a record and a panted. Don't misplace these 
without faith. It's impossible to assess the healing virtue. And faith comes by hearing and understanding the word of life. A cry does not hear. Jesus, have mercy. Crying does not secure access to the healing battle. But the cry of faith. But the cry of faith. But may cry. A cry yet louder. Jesus said, Thy faith has made the whole. Not thy cry. Thy faith. Thy faith. When he had heard that Christ was passing by, today, 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 I received my miracle. Today, today, Jesus. The cry never gave him the healing. Verse 48 of Luke chapter 8. Sorry, Mark 10, sorry. Verse 48. Thy faith has made you whole. Thy faith. Verse 52, sorry. Thy faith. Thy faith. A cry yet louder. A cry more and more. But that didn't bring the healing. Faith brought the healing. Faith brought the healing. Faith brought the healing. Giri giri action does not bring any action. <laughs> they brought that man down the roof. Jesus didn't saw their effort. He saw their faith. Son, their faith is forgiven. <laughs> so, so I've been in places where they almost tore me to pieces. I look at my dress after getting home, and I was wondering what happened to me. Don't think that the God healed by doing this. <laughs> Is the faith in them that guarantees access to the healing virtue? We are all tonguing you. Peter said to Jesus, He said, Somebody touch me with faith and drew virtue from me. So everything about healing only guarantees effect by faith. You can't get it out. Oh, Jesus, I've been working for you all my life. He said, now I don't know. <laughs> don't you know the covenant? My virtue can't flow without your faith. Rise and be healed in the name of Jesus. Let faith arise in your heart. Rise and be healed in the name of Jesus. He has healed you. He set you free. Arise and be healed in the name of Jesus. Let faith arise in your heart. Rise and be healed in the name of Jesus. He has healed you and set you free. Lay none of hands that does not heal people.
it doesn't mean you get healing. Jesus himself lay hands on them in Nazareth. They smiled. <laughs> And they marveled at their unbelief. So the laying of hands of Jesus <laughs> could not heal them. What of my own small hand? How much less my small hand? Is that which Papa will lay hands on me? <laughs> Nothing will happen. It is the virtue of Jesus that flows through mortar clay to heal people. <laughs> I remember one of our elders one time. <laughs> he said, I cannot take communion from anyone that is not ordained. <laughs> so is it ordination that made the, made the communion? I've been taking communion a long time before I was ever called to ministry. In my house early in the morning. In the evening. <laughs> Religion, religion is very bad. <laughs> Jesus laid hands on them. Was he ordained? <laughs> or, or not ordained? <laughs> he was given the Holy Ghost without measure. <laughs> and he laid hands on them. <laughs> and they were not healed. <laughs> Lay no hands will not heal you without your faith. Laying of hands will not heal you without your faith. A woman came from Atlanta. They've done IVF four times. And I was going out on that, that morning to the airport. So I was told that there's a woman from Atlanta. He said, that's all I came for. I want a touch. I want to have my children. I said, now I'm going to the airport, have your children. Bye-bye. Three children, one after another. There are some have done like this to them. Be healed. Now. Now. And I embrace them. Rise and be healed. In the name of Jesus. Let faith arise in your heart. Arise and be healed. In the name of Jesus. He has healed you. And made you whole. Settled. Settled. You see, most of the things we are looking at are sort of healing. They are mere channels that require faith to draw from. A man read the book is to divine health. <laughs> And Psalm page 20, according to him, and discovered that I said Satan is not a gentleman. That I said Satan is not a gentleman. So he told the hospital, I discharged myself. I'm going home. I have blood pressure. I saw a hypertension. I saw the doctor was a doctor in that hospital. Was one of the doctors there? I'm going home. I saw him ten years after. Till and heart. That happened eighty six. I saw him ninety six. Arise and be healed in the name of Jesus. Let faith arise in your heart. Rise and be healed in the name of Jesus. He has healed you and set you free. A reverend gentleman. Uh, no, rock and to ballet. Alufa. Alufa, Tony. Alufa, Tony. 
Don't confuse me, you little man. <laughs> Are three dilapidating diseases. Only I saw meta cantolic. I have blood pressure. I saw hypertension. Dizziness. I tea uh at can you know one here we see. My God. Ulu <laughs> amu. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> and I had a prayer team. I'm over here. I want to do my bad dura. Prayer and fasting. One bad way, one bad dura. Seventeen years. Hmm. I don't make that in logo. No change. Kori yi pa da kan kan. So one time. I'm on last week. Kan. He now went to a Christian bookstore. Over the sea, he bought a tajah when he went Christian. And bought three books. All right, we met a nibe. One by Kenneth Yege. Hey, you can't walk Kenneth Yege, Jadi. Keys to divine healing. One by Freddie Casey Price. How faith works. And one from me. Keys to divine health. He now settled down. Looking for the way out. Because if faith has not worked, why is he not working? He said after that, he now declared three day war. Three days was enough to deal with the 17 year trouble. He was set free. He came here himself, wrote a long letter, and came to speak to it. 95. Come and give the Lord praise. No shortcut. No faith. No healing. Oh, lady was No faith. Oh, but in Nick No healing. But when Nick by Wilson. No faith. Oh, but in Nick Bagbo. No healing. But when Nick by Wilson. No faith. Oh, but in Nick Bagbo. No healing. But when Nick by Wilson. I read this testimony in 1983. Oh, a woman was reading a book, Face Up with a Miracle, by Bob Mumford. And she was in a, a what do you call it, a laundry room. She didn't know when she stood up from the chair. Raising her clothes. Only to discover the chair was behind. Faith came up in her heart. The healing battle came in. And she walked free. You are free today. If faith is the way to eat, why don't you settle down? To build your faith and secure your liberty. Faith is it. Not a belief system, but word triggered faith. Word triggered faith. Himself took my phone and bore my disease. By his stripes I was healed. I've been here before I was sick. I have a receipt in my hand. I have to carry the goods. Nobody pays for any good twice. That my son that testified in the third service. He was dead for eight hours. And he had an encounter. He said, he heard me say, why must you pay for what Christ already paid for? Jabba to life. I mean, cookie, Tiano. It's not a psychological belief system. It's faith and God. Word and God faith. <laughs> Word triggered faith. Word sparked faith. When that happens, you say to this man, be thou removed. You shall remove. If you won't doubt in your heart. So it is faith in your heart that empowers the word of your mouth. It is faith in your heart that empowers the words of your mouth. When I said one billion witches can stand on my way. 
Hey, my God is on God. On the world, and so it's power. And so when they hear, yeah. Oh, yeah. give us chance. Give us. He said, try it now. Rise and be healed. In the name of Jesus. And let faith arise in your heart. Arise and be healed. In the name of Jesus. He has healed you. And set you free. Faith is it. So what are we here there for? You are here for your faith to be triggered. So you can take your portion by force. The kingdom of God suffers violence. The violence is by the force of faith. Force of faith. Force of faith. Force of faith. Any faith empty des desperation. I said faith empty desperation. You are just desperate. But there is no faith inside. Like the woman, the Canaanite woman. I won't let go. No. They say, I'm not sent to you. Said, nah. Whether you are sent to me or not, I'm here to get you. He said, great is thy faith. It's not her desperation. It's her faith. Matthew 15, 22 to 28. It's her faith. Some are desperate. But it's faithless desperation. Faithless desperation. What's your name? This is enough, oh God. 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 Look at me. Look at me. I'm a winner. I'm a winner. For many, many years. Any faithless desperation will not faithless desperation won't answer. But when your reaction is faith triggered, all devils will clear off. All devils will clear off. I want to get angry. Somebody has fully paid for this thing. Jesus paid. He fully paid for you to live a super healthy life. Jesus fully paid. You can't pay for any item twice. It's a lega. 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 One of my friends said, eh, he said he heard from me for the first time that sickness is a lega. It's contrary to the law of redemption. Redemption has cleared it. So it becomes a lega. In the heavenly court of justice, it is a lega. It's not permitted to who you answer. Get angry. Today is your day. Get angry. Today is your day. It is faith in your heart. I tell me the healing in your heart. Faith in your heart. It's what determines the healing in your heart. Somebody's eyes open. Stroke is gone out of somebody. Because Jesus already paid for it. The Jesus in you and in me has no stroke. Has no cancer. He said it's a mystery. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Not shame. Not shame. Is Christ sick? And where is he? That's your new engine. That's your new engine. That's your new engine. Whatever you can see, Jesus, in your heart, having is illegal. If Christ does not have it, you can't have it. You can't have it. You can't have it. You can't have it. Faith in the heart. 
I'm born again. I have Christ on my inside. Christ is in bay, no me. He's not sick. Ah, Jesus was shy, son. He's not crippled. Ko yaro. He's not blind. Jesus will follow you. Whatever Christ is not. Oh, come on, you bat the jot in Jesus. Does not belong to me. Ko let what you want, no me. Reject it. He will not call Jale from Arari. Reject it. Reject my grain. Reject blindness. Let faith arise in your heart. Let faith arise in your heart. Somebody already paid. You are out of the market. You are not for buying and selling. Everything buying and selling inside you. Must glide the way. Must glide the way. Must glide the way. Today, today, today. Today, today. Today, today. Today, today. Call it by name. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. I've been set free by Jesus. Who now lives in me? Take your hand off my life. Take your hand off my life. Take your hand off my life. Today is my day. Today is my day. Somebody's crying now. A cry of faith. A cry of faith. A definition of faith. Action of faith. Open your eyes and see. Open your ears and you hear. Move your hand, it will move. Move your leg, it will move. It's your day. 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 He hears by his word. We think that's our faith. That taps into the healing back. Your faith has come alive. So take your healing. 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 In Jesus' name. Now, whatever is born of God, overcome the world. And overcome by faith. Until one is born again, his faith cannot deliver maximally. But when you are born again, your faith begins to answer like fire. If you are here this afternoon, and you are not born again yet, before I minister according to what the Lord is leading me to do, I want to bring you in. So you won't be looking for what falls from the table. Come on inside. Come to Jesus. It's your turn. It's your turn. If I hear you like me to pray with you, to be born again, please stand. Stand. If you can't stand, raise your hand. After the ministration today, you must stand. You must stand. In the name of Jesus. God bless you. Many more are standing up wherever you are. It's your turn for a change of story. It begins with salvation. It begins with salvation. It begins with salvation. When you are saved, your faith comes alive. When you are faith, when you are saved, your understanding comes alive. Everything about your life begins with salvation. It begins with salvation. Amen. For those who are standing or who are raising their hands, bow your heads. And pray this prayer of faith from the depth of your heart. Say after me, Lord Jesus, with your right hand lifted, with your heads bowed, 
Say after me. So tell me. Lord Jesus, have mercy on me. Forgive my sins. I repent of them. In truth, today, forgive me, Jesus. I believe you died for me. On the third day you rose again to justify me and set me free from Satan. Today, I accept you as my Lord and my Savior. And I believe my sins are now forgiven. I'm not a child of God. I'm saved. I'm born again. Thank you, Jesus, for saving my soul. Amen. Keep your hands up. Be blessed of the Lord. In the name of Jesus. I cover each of you with the blood of Jesus. Remain covered in Jesus' name. You will run this way to the end. You will make it to, the, to heaven. In the name of Jesus. So shall it be. Congratulations. 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 And by a prophet. The Lord brought Israel out of Egypt. And by a prophet. Was preserved. Um, privileged. With the call of election. To silence the harassment of the devil. In the life of anyone. He was casting out evil spirit with his word. Therefore, today, every spirit of infirmity that has had anyone banned over time, I command them out of your life. He gave them power and authority over all devils. And to cure diseases. That means our diseases. That were the workings of devils. Holding band the people. Now, in the name of Jesus, exercise my spiritual authority over any devil tormenting your life to lose his grip right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Recognize that you have been translated from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of his own dear son. The kingdom of light. Darkness has come to arrest you in the kingdom of light. Recognize that you are beyond where the devil's hand can reach. You are saved. Raise up together with Christ. Amen together to see with him in heavenly places. Far above. You need to understand the far above dimension of your new status in redemption. And react violently against anything to the contrary. Therefore, in the name of Jesus, every mark of the devil on any life here or under the sound of my voice around the world. Every cross of devil that's head any man, but his head down. I command them off right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Believe the Lord your God. Shall be established. Believe also his prophet. And your story will change. 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 And your story will change.
I know I'm sent to you. Can I tell you what? What I taught you now is my first time of teaching it. It's the first time of he telling me to do it. So I'm sent to you. Because today is your day. Today is your day. Therefore, be here in the name of Jesus. That cancer is caused from I the roots. Be HIV is caused from I the roots. Hepatitis of any grade is caused. Paralysis is caused. Stroke is caused. Blindness is caused. Deafness is caused. Every kind of swelling, every kind of lump, anywhere in your body, including goiter, whatever it is, that's not planted by God, I command them uprooted now. Be free in the name of Jesus. Please turn to your feet. Enjoy the Lord, yes, eh? Isaiah 52. Isaiah made you near her daughter. It's time to put your faith to work. What was he cooking? One of you, but where so you share verse one. Toba, where say, Kenny? Awake. Edgy. Awake. Edgy. Put on Israel. Edgy Agbara. Oh, Zion. It was Sion. Zion is the church. Sion is he, Jay, your Lord. Put on thy strength. Put on thy beautiful garments. O Jerusalem. The holy city. For henceforth. There shall no more come into thee. Molest us. Torment us. The torment us shall not come in your midst. Shake that side from the, the door. Shake that. Ah, shake. 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 Nobody's coming to shake your leg. Say shake that foot. Shake that foot from the door. Every devil is shaking. <laughs> the Paul shook the venomous viper off his hand. To the fire. Shake thyself from the door. Arise. And sit down. Lose their sight from the bounds of their neck. Oh, captive daughter of life. You must get to that point. But me was ran. Blind man. Shook himself. Keep out of captivity. The man on the the Baltic man. He said, Take me to the roof. We'll repair the roof later. Shook himself. At the pool of Bethesda. You don't drag to get it. You dive to get it. Whosoever first gets there. Is he? Somebody's here. You can't go by the same way you came. Now, in one moment, put your hand on anywhere you are hot. Your neck, your breast, your waist, or any organ of your body that is malfunctioning. Put your hand on your head. On your in the name of Jesus, Jesus Christ, who sent me. <laughs> Would your faith alive? In the one who sent me. And the short man that he sent. When your faith comes alive. You will take delivery. Of what he sent me to deliver. Now in the name of Jesus. 
I command your instant healing and deliverance. That trouble is turned to triumph. That trial is turned to testimony. In the name of Jesus. Every tormented baby here is set free in the name of Jesus. Every terminal disease is terminated in the name of Jesus. Blind eyes open. Deaf ears here. Stiff neck tongue. Pains in the body vanish. Discomforts in the body vanish. Heart disease settled. Kidney challenge is healed. Liver trouble is healed. In the name of Jesus. Every planting of the devil. That's what we have. The nightmares in your life. The seeds following you around. I command them off in the name of Jesus. It is done. It is done. Your healing is delivered. The healing battery is flowing. The healing battery is flowing. It's flowing right now. It's flowing right now. In the name of Jesus. Lift up your two hands to heaven. Choir sing. As they begin to sing, check yourself. The healing virtue is flowing. <laughs> your desire is being delivered. It's going to test money. That lump has disappeared. That disturbance has disappeared. You can now turn and switch. Things have turned for you. Your without hand is now moving. So with that leg is now moving. Come and celebrate God. Celebrate God. Celebrate God. Now let's praise Him. Let the pastor to come and take I the test. I receive my miracle today, today. I receive my miracle today, today. I will never go away empty and dead. I receive my miracle today, today. Oh. You experience God's touch from the very proclamation and the word taught and the action you have put up begin to come to the front where we are celebrating Jesus. Come on now, let's pray. I receive my miracle today, today. I receive my miracle today, today. I will never go away empty and dead. I receive my miracle today, today. I receive, I receive my miracle today. Somebody celebrate your miracle. Stick! 
Lift up your two hands, everyone, and give God thanks. He has never let us know a witness. Every time we gather, he shows up. He shows up. He has done it again. Now join me and praise him. Give him thanks. Give him thanks. I have a number of living testimonies here. And the miracles are still going on. He's still touching people. He's still touching lives. He's still healing people. He's still telling people free. He's present here. He's present here. Give him time. In Jesus' name. Give the Lord a big hand of praise. And get seated, please. Let's take a few of these testimonies right now. 
And every time you hear one testimony, give him a chair. Give him a clap. Celebrate him. No one can do a miracle. No small miracle. The big God doesn't do small things. Every miracle is a big miracle. Amen. Praise the Lord. Cain de Olari Waju. For four years, please come forward. For four years, she has had a thyroid colic cyst that has been on her thyroid for the past four years. But right in this service, as the declarations went forth and she placed her hand on that thyroid, the cyst disappeared. All of the pains, the discomfort, and all the symptoms are gone, and she set free to the glory of God. What do you mean by thyroid, please? What is thyroid? Okay. It's a gland. Gland in the neck. Vanished. Come on, give the Lord praise. Why you for Lord? Rita Ebele, for the past two months, has had intense body weakness. She had to be aided to come to church this morning. But after the declarations went forth, strength was instantly restored. She has been dancing, jumping, and celebrating God. All of the discomfort is gone to the glory of God. Hannah Olaleye, for the past seven years, she has been having pain in the heart. But right after the declarations this afternoon, all the pains disappeared, and now she set free to the glory of God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. If for my Bridget Umeudu, for the past nine months, she has had severe pain in the chest and in the right shoulder. But right in this service, as the declarations went forth, all of the pains, all the discomfort of nine months instantly Amen. disappeared in a moment. Give the Lord praise. Michael, okay, for over one year, he has been unable to breathe properly and has been afflicted with a strange sickness where he is constantly shaking and sweating. But right in this service, as the declarations went forth, his breathing is restored, the shaking is gone, Hallelujah. the sweating is gone, he set free Come to the glory give of the Lord God. Pray. Hallelujah. For the past one month, has had excruciating pain in the neck. But right in this service, as the declarations went forth, the pain disappeared. Now he set free to the glory Amen. of God. Amen. Israel Ikechuku, a six month old baby, has been coughing constantly for the past seven days. But right as the declarations went forth today, the coffin ended. Hallelujah. Now set free to the glory of God. Give the Lord praise. Jesus is healing babies. Agnes Akpo, for the past nine years, has been having a strange movement in her body. According to her, it's like the movement of a flood going all over her system. But right as the declarations went forth today, every one of those sensations disappeared, and now she set free to the glory Amen. of God. All this are pointed to the fact that no matter what evil seed followed you here, they are not permitted to go back with you. In the name of Lord Jesus. Two more, please. Mrs. Omotosho has been having chronic headache and general body pain for the past one week. But right as the declarations went forth, the pain disappeared. 
now set free to the glory of God. Give the Lord praise. Emmanuel Essien and this miracle took place from last week had been afflicted with tuberculosis for 11 years but he came to the service last week Sunday and after the encounter in the service from Sunday all of the symptoms of tuberculosis everything ended and is gone forever Shall we all rise, please? What an awesome God we serve. Give him thanks. Give him thanks. Give him thanks. What we have shared today is a pointer to the fact that your miracle is following you. It's following you home. 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 He's following you. He's following you. Lift up your two hands and give you. Give him thanks for it. Give him thanks for it. Every testimony here, the one ready, the one not ready, they are declared permanent. No small miracles. Jesus did it all. Give God thanks for it. Give God thanks for it. Give God thanks for it. All the miracles that will take place as you are going home, give God thanks for, it, for your own now we arrive before you get home give thanks give thanks give thanks give thanks give thanks the word has gone for the testimony was followed the testimony was followed if you receive it and believe it your testimony is sure if you receive it and believe it your testimony is sure give him thanks everybody give him glory Amen. Amen. As you begin to sing and praise him, lift your back to your seat. Quietly celebrate him. High praises. High praises. Everybody singing. Jumping and praising God. The miracles are still taking place. All over. All over. All over. Now let's praise him together. Everybody look and see what the Lord has done for me. Everybody look. Everybody look around me. Yeah. He has healed my pain. Hey. Everybody look around me. Yeah. He has done it for me. Yeah. Everybody look, look, see. He has heard my story. Yeah.
Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift your hand to heaven, everybody. And let's begin to glorify God. Appreciate him, Mr. Warning. Father, we thank you. Blessed be your holy name. In the name of Jesus, we have given thanks. Somebody believes here loud, amen. It is done. In Jesus' precious name. Give Jesus a big hand of praise. Please take your seat for a moment. And let's listen to this special announcement. Praise God. Next Sunday is Easter Sunday. Easter Sunday. It shall be our Easter miracle banquet. And Jesus showed himself alive Jesus, if you have a lot with many infallible proofs to the apostles. He will do the same in our midst oh, at this Easter miracle he banquet. Is Among others, come expecting an eye-opening miracle that will grant all of us access into realms of brighter revelations bringing about a revolution both in our spiritual lives and our endeavors in life. A grave opening miracle that will shatter all choking situations in our lives. Breakthrough miracles that will bring an end to all areas of struggle in our lives and many more. From scriptures, we understand the resurrection signifies the opening of the seal to the redeemed into the realm of the supernatural. As our natural realm. Furthermore, it shall be a special communion service because the first thing Jesus did when he rose from the dead was to serve his disciples the communion so as to open their eyes that they might understand the scriptures. Come prepared for an encounter with the resurrected Christ that will bring every one of us out of every form of grave in the name of Jesus Christ. Jesus is Lord. Somebody excited, say loud amen. Will you stand on your feet before the Lord and lift your hand one more time and celebrate Jesus for his mighty acts, his marvelous acts, his wondrous acts. Father, thank you in Jesus' precious name. Somebody believes it loud amen. Please, let's take note that in the Easter miracle banquet, there will be no special healing miracle service because every one of the first three services are all miracle services. Hallelujah. God will be demonstrating infallible proofs. So come set. Every service will deliver a specific miracle in the name of Jesus. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. You believe it's a loud amen. It is done. In Jesus' name. Let's share the goodness of the Lord together. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Peace. Praise God, fortunes my portion in 2024. 
Congratulations. Amen and amen. Congratulations, somebody as you go and be blessed as you do so. All our new converts, please remember to stop at the new at the new convert Drop the we love you card and pick up the gift item within for you. And if you came after the worship offering, you can drop your offering with the officials around the altar or at the various exits. Be blessed in Jesus' name.